All right, it's a couple minutes to five. So um, let, let's wait until I have a couple minutes to five on this clock. Nope, five o'clock on the computer clock, which is probably better. Um, let's go ahead and open the meeting. I know Victor is on his way. I saw last minute um, information from him that he was commuting and he would try to join us, but we do have a quorum. So do I have a motion to open this meeting, the work session? So moved. Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Um, welcome, everyone, in this state of emergency and catastrophe in the village of Mamaroneck. As, um, as you all know, we have um, about 10, 10 days ago suffered a horrific flood in the village. Since then, village staff have been working uh, untold hours, uh, 12 hour shifts, seven days a week. It's been um, overwhelming. That said, the work that they have accomplished in cleaning up the village, um, making sure that county, state, and federal aid is here doing all they can for the village, that Con Edison is coordinating with the building department, it has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, so as a result, we have not added new things to our work session agenda tonight. We have limited staff support, extremely limited staff support. And the same will be the case in our regular meeting where we will do only the most necessary things tonight. Um, that said, let's move on and tackle this. Um, I wanna talk first, if we could, about the rental registration program, which is old business, um, 1L. I was looking, I was just looking for the, you're going to have to forgive me. I have spent the day over, um, most of the day at the resource center and trying to get um, certain rescue operations settled and, and sorted and on the right foot. But um, this had originally come to us as a request from staff so that they would know how many residences there are in the village where residences, not resi not residents, but, but homes, dwellings that people have in the village. So, and this is critical for evacuation. It's critical, critical for our first responders knowing where families and individuals are living. Nora, Dan, do you have any thoughts on this? I mean, I think we should do it. I think we talked about it for, we've talked about it before. It recently surfaced on, surfaced on the agenda. I think it's um, something that was talked about in 2014 when the multiple dwellings law was adopted. That was one of the primary reasons for adopting the multiple dwellings law. And I, you know, that was one of the safety concerns. So I think we absolutely have to do this. Dan? Uh, I I'm in favor of the concept of it. I will tell you, I have not studied the proposed chapter 216, uh, and I'm concerned about some of the details. And um, uh, so I would, you know, I'd like to go, go through more in depth. Uh, I'm not in favor of moving forward tonight, but I think- okay. me, this, me, this isn't the multiple dwelling law. This is a rental I'm registration not, program, uh, just to be clear. This, this is what else? Uh, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, according to attached 1L, at least in my packet from two weeks ago, is 216 rental property that's attached to it as, a, as a, from staff. I have not gone through that. I've gone through the concept of it. Okay. And, and just, I'm not, I'm not prepared. To help, to help move the conversation along for next time, um, what, what are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share so that we can be more productive next time? I, I just, with everything that's going on, I haven't I've devoted my time to those that I thought were more critical. Uh, I will be happy to go through it. I would rather talk about this at the next work session. That's uh, fine. So we'll keep it on for the next work session. Okay, so just to be clear, what you have before you is the version, is a law from the town of Township of Hamilton, New Jersey. Mm. Is that, this is, we haven't drafted, nothing's been drafted here yet. Right. This is the, so, as a basis for discussion. So, yeah. Bob, why don't you go through, if we can, for a minute? I, I, have, not, I have not studied it at all. No, 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 let me finish. 
Why don't you go through what you think the elements for such an approach should be? As I said, I haven't studied it, so okay. I don't. I don't. So I, I, I think we're, Kelly, we're all in the same boat. We haven't studied it. We need yeah. to. We need to do our homework. Got it. So I have made a note to keep that on for the next work session. But I, I would say I think there's a consensus amongst the three of us that there need that there is a need for such a law. Well, I'm I'm not getting a consensus, Dan. I'm trying to get at that. Do you, do you want this? Do you not want it? Yeah, I think the concept is good. I don't know if we need a law or some other approach or what what's in the details. That's what I need to. Okay, so I, I can't say there's a consensus necessarily. Um, Jiminy, I just how about um, well, how about one P? The tree law. We've put that on for the regular meeting to schedule a public so, hearing. Can I? Can yeah, I go ahead, Nora? Please. So, so I think this. I think this is very confusing. It's going to be confusing for the public to follow because we're sort of working off our agenda from five weeks ago, our last regular meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I had annotated an agenda that didn't get published. So we disposed of the tree item five weeks ago and decided to schedule the public hearing at our regular meeting tonight. So I think we don't have to discuss it now because we've got the tree law on for our regular meeting tonight. Right, and what I guess I wanted to ask you is that we have a draft resolution that we that we did get recently mm -hmm. yeah. that sets the public hearing for the 27th, which is our next regular meeting. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask if, since we just got that resolution, is that what, do you think that's a good date? Do you think given the emergency, we should push it till October? I just wanted to discuss the date for public hearing uh, work session while we're together. I, don't, I actually think it wouldn't be a bad idea to, you know, because we're going back to Zoom, people can't come in person. I don't think it's a bad idea to discuss, to have public hearings over two nights. And, and that's you know, fine too. So maybe we start the next week. Yeah and see where we get and continue. And we may it. well continue it. Yeah, we may well continue it. I okay, think that's so that. we'll leave the resolution that we just got the way it was written. I think so, yeah. The right, and, and pass that in the regular meeting, I hope. Dan, do you have anything? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, all right. I think um, enforcement of multiple dwelling law I, th I think we need some input from staff on that. I know Dan Sarnoff is incredibly literate on that. He's here, but I've been with him earlier today. He's pretty fried. Dan, do you want to talk about that or should we put that one off? Well, you know, when, the, when we talked about this last, uh, you know, when I tried to put forth to the board, not necessarily a comparison of what's in the multiple dwelling law, uh, as opposed to the current New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code, but rather uh, I tried to give a uh, overlook of the what the, the voluminous uh, chapters and uh, regulatory actions that are part of the current building code as opposed to the multiple dwelling law, which was uh, an item that was, uh, I believe, a you know, set forth by New York State in the 1920s and 1930s, which at the time uh, and still only applies to uh, cities of, I believe, 300,000 or more, which at you know back then was three, now it's one, which is New York City. The other two being uh, the, the city of Buffalo and the city of Rochester, which uh, have uh, long since uh, had their populations fall below that 300,000 level. Um, but I know what we've been asked to try and do is prepare some sort of document establishing a matrix to show more specifically what's in uh, one versus the other. Uh, but obviously, it's, it has not been uh, the uh, the highest priority in the last several weeks between that uh, the back-to-back -back, uh, uh, events uh, of uh, Hon Henri and Ida. Okay. Um, so thank you. We're not. We're not, we're not ready on that one. Well, just can I make Go ahead, yeah. Uh, Dan, I, I understand that and I have no problems with, you know, taking time to do that when you all get back on our feet, that, that's not a problem. But I do have a conceptual question and problem. 
we have a law on the books in um, it is it is not being adhered to, and that bothers me. You know, I, I don't think we can do selective enforcement. We have a law. We have a law. If it's called to our attention, we need to. You know, if if it's slipped by, then we need to deal with it. If we need want to repeal the law or change the law, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that either. But there, there you know. I understand that there's things within the multiple dwelling law that are superseded in terms of requirements by the International Building Code, which would take precedent because you have to enforce that as well and you have to enforce whatever the most restrictive is. I understand that. I just don't understand why we're, why we have unilaterally decided all of a sudden not to enforce it. I, um, I don't. I don't think that's the case, and I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, you know, talk with Bob so we can properly address any specific comments you have. Yeah, I mean, I'm not aware that um, that this law hasn't been enforced. In fact, I've been consulted by the building department over the past year or so on several occasions about trying to work yeah, through the somewhat know. arcane definitions in the multiple dwelling. <laughs> So I'm not aware that it's not being applied. Uh, maybe there are instances that haven't come to my attention. But there, there are buildings that have been approved that do not have the setback. Multiple dwelling buildings that have been approved, um, you know, where it has not been pointed out by the building department uh, and permits are, uh, have been issued or going through the process of being issued. Uh, where they have not adhered to the back, to the setback requirements as, as set forth well, in the law. I recall one such, one instance where people thought the multiple dwelling law required a setback, but because of the way it defined its application, it didn't. Uh, because, because the street, it wasn't a corner lot, it was a street that turned that, that appeared to make a corner, but was one street, so there was not a corner. Under the municipal, under the multiple dwelling law, that's the only one I'm familiar with. That would, it's, it's entirely possible that there are others, but uh, if the one you're talking about is the one by the regatta, and I'm, the um, the name of the street is Pro there's there's one there's yeah. one on Prospect, yeah, Prospect. and there, then there then there is the one that used to be where the um, motorcycle Bob's motor, Bob's Honda used to be, yeah. Yeah, uh, one of those was the street turned. I think it was. I think that was the Honda Bobs. Honda Bobs. The street turned under the definition of the municipal, the way the uh, multiple dwelling law defined its application, it did it applied at an intersection of two streets. That wasn't an intersection of two streets because the street turns, and is it's one continuous street even though it makes a left turn. And that's why it was not applied. It wasn't a choice not to apply the law. It was a decision that the law did not apply. And that's true for both of those projects? I'm not familiar with the other one. I, I, it's possible that I was consulted on it, but I don't recall. Okay, I think it happened. would be helpful in this discussion if we could check both of those out, please. Well, here's my question, because I, I just want to be sure when we do have this discussion about about this, that we're not having a discussion about properties that are the subject of litigation. I don't know that any of those properties are under litigation. I'm just, I just, and a word of caution for um, the continued discussion on this, which it sounds like we're going to have to have, you know, push this over to the next work session as well. I mean, right. My suggestion, Dan, is if you get us the, give me the addresses, I'll talk to the building department and we'll figure out what happened. Okay, that would be helpful. Can, can I just add something about the next work session? Sure. So to, if we what we don't discuss tonight will automatically get pushed off to the 27th. Yeah. Possible the things we discuss tonight maybe should be pushed off to the first meeting in October. For sure. And so let's be yeah. mindful of that as we plow through. Yes. Yes, thank you, Nora. Okay, okay. let's just, um, there, there was one thing, I think it's on, somewhere in here I saw, okay, can, can we go to old business 1K? 
Municity 5. This has been a priority of members of the board, a priority of staff for some time. If we could bang that out tonight. Um, looks like we've had backup since August 5th. Um, I, I did uh, uh, conduct reference checks with the city of Rye uh, with uh, White Plains and one of our assistant building inspectors used Municipal 5 in uh, the town of Somers and he was uh, feel very happy with it. Uh, in the city of Rye, um, it was explained to me that they try to kind of do everything at once, which is making it a little bit uh, uh, more problematic, the uh, implementation. Um, uh, there were other issues with uh, uh, data conversion, but I'm, I'm not gonna just spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, you know, we've been going back and forth with the vendor. Uh, we need to uh, get some information on some more specific um, building department related items. Uh, but you know, I can uh, you know, try and work with building department and uh, other staff to see what type of information we'll be able to get them soon. Obviously, understanding that the majority of the building staff is uh, out in the field every day right now uh, doing inspections. Okay, so Dan, it sounds like the village is not ready to pull the trigger and buy this immediately. Well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to be able to buy it immediately, but we're just, uh, I think the um, the last email that we uh, uh, had from uh, uh, the vendor uh, was asking about uh, some uh, building department related stuff. Let me just pull it up. So I, guess I, I, I have not had a tremendous amount of time to prepare for the meeting uh, this evening. Um, yeah, this basically, is, this, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. So maybe the first weekend, the first meeting in October is when we exactly. should rate. Exactly. Because I don't, I can't imagine the building department have finding no. spare time between now no. and Dan, did you have any questions about Munici Munici Municity 5? I know that in the past you have, I want to make sure that um, staff have an opportunity to address that. So maybe we could act on it in October. I'm I'm happy to act on it you now or October, and I think October probably makes more sense. I just want to, an assurance from staff that whatever the modules are that we need to have to make the thing work, and whatever we need in terms of training uh, and tr for transition, which I'm told will be not a couple of months, but probably six months or more, to talking to other municipalities that have done this, uh, you know, to make sure that that is within the budget. And, you know, what I'm happy to, you know, if we need more modules, you know, to do this, then we need to do it, but we need to do it right. And I don't want to do it later because it, it then, once you've trained, and you don't have the other modules, you have to go back and retrain. At least that's what I'm being told from various people that, you know, are involved in this type of thing. Uh, I'm 100% supportive, and I want to make sure staff has whatever the resources they need to do it, but I want to do it complete. I don't want to, you know, this is our, you know, third time around the um, Maypole, um, you know, so whatever we have to do, we have to, I want to commit to make sure that it, it's done and done right, and we have a timeline that is realistic to implement it because as as I understand it and Dan correct me if I'm wrong municipality municip um, five or whatever the number is uh, is supposed to be able to have a hundred percent of all the stuff that comes in from the building department and other departments you know for the land use etc uh, so we can get stuff quickly we you know uh, uh, that everybody can, you know, see what's there. It's very transparent. Um, I know that um, you can do this in Rye, you can do this in Rochelle. Um, and I'd like to make sure that it, 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 it can accomplish submitting everything electronically, except for the final drawings, which would then have to be, you know, stamped and sealed. Uh, okay. Even though other municipalities do it electronically, I know our staff would like hard copy I don't have a problem with it. I just don't want to cut down a lot of trees, cut down a lot of trees. Uh, I understand. 
you know, I don't want to make sure you have the tools to do this. I don't want to know that we started, and then all of a sudden we have to put another, you know, fifty thousand dollars to the budget to accomplish it. We should be able to do this all at one time, so everybody knows what it is, and we have a realistic idea of what the expectations are to come, you know, at the at the end result. Yeah, um, I will uh, endeavor to uh, try and address the uh, assessment questions that uh, uh, municipality needs from us uh, within the. Uh, the next several weeks, so we should have uh, more okay. information. But no, and if it has to be the end of October or November, whatever, okay. I'd rather take the time and do it right than rush it because you know when everybody is fried and doesn't have the time to really think it through. Uh, so do it. You know, I'll, we'll depend upon staff to come back. You know, when you're ready. You know, but I, I do would like to see a timeline and what it is that we're actually getting. Um, can, can, this is this is it. This is at least the second or third time I know that um, Dan Natchez that you've, that you've asked for checking of references, which I think is critical, and I agree with you. Um, and I know that Dan ha Sarnoff has checked some references and talked to people who've used it. But but Dan Natchez, would you be able to provide the names of the people that you're talking to who are giving you you know pause and doubts or or concerns oh, no, about this? So that. Just, nope. just hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so that village staff can talk to those people to try to alleviate any of these concerns? Uh, I've given <clears throat> the people that, or the areas or the municipalities to Dan before. I assume he has now talked to him. I please mention them. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. great. So, yeah, no, I, for instance, I spoke to the city planner in Rye, who I, I believe Dan knows. Uh, I've spoken to the city of White Plains. Uh, and as I said, I also spoke to one of our staff who had ex who had experience using the product in another community. And he was he was very very pleased with uh, its abilities. Okay, yeah, I just was hoping to cut to the chase, and if there's a specific concern that we just just get that addressed. But it sounds like we're all okay, right? The, the, yeah, we're, I think we're okay. The general concern that I have, you know, yeah. with it, all this is collapsed to is. Make sure you understand what it is you're doing and what you need, because the biggest issue that I have found is we, that they needed other things afterwards and they didn't because uh, it hadn't been thought through. And that meant they had to retrain people twice. Uh, and that, that, that doesn't, that means it's not up and running the way you want it run. So you gotta, you gotta plan it out and you need to have a timeline and, um, I'm sure that the vendor can help on that as well. I mean, they have a lot of people that I understand from others or, you know, that are there. So they have a lot of experience that can help. Them. I just don't want another Excella. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, God. No, no, no. None of us do. Nora, do you have anything else to add on this? No, I just think, you know, let's, let, let's postpone it till the first meeting in October, provided the staff is ready. Yeah, I think they can be ready by October. That's really a call for Dan because he's, yeah. you know. Well, he can give us an update if they're ready to proceed in October. Fine. Otherwise, he can tell us when he can proceed. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, the Safe Streets Initiative because this was time sensitive in July. Um, yeah. This is something. So, so the county is repaving Mamaroneck Avenue, and. Unfortunately, and with just a, a heart-wrenching tragedy, since this has come up, there has a hit and run and a, a death um, of a pedestrian crossing Mamaroneck Avenue at an intersection that we know is troubling, we've known for a while is um, less than optimally safe. Um, this this um, Safe Streets Initiative is something that County Executive George Latimer has, um, is very interested in pursuing that when we redo roads that we implement safe streets strategies. And one of the things that um, came up in my discussion with Catherine Parker during the parade, as a matter of fact, was whether a bike lane on Mamaroneck Avenue would be possible um, I know that bike lanes tend to slow traffic. They tend to um, get people to be a little more aware. And seeing as Mamaroneck Avenue is a, a uh, goes to a commuter line, you know, it, it's ideal in theory 
for this kind of thing. Now, I wanted to ask Matt Carmody whether it was possible to have a bike lane on Mamaroneck Avenue. I think perhaps the only way it could be done, but I don't, I don't know, is, is in the center of Mamaroneck Avenue, in the center lane where our bike uh, cops ride. Um, you know, obviously these would be delineated lanes. It would absolutely cut down on U-turns, I think. But, um, but we did want to talk to Matt Carmody about this. And, and this is something that given the paving project is soon, um, th the county would need to know, know our wishes on this as soon as possible. Um, Dan Sarnoff, th do you know if Matt Carmody has weighed in on this? And do you have any information to add to this? Um, well, we've asked Matt to look at a couple of items, uh, specifically in the vicinity of uh, uh, the Waverly Avenue intersection. Uh, we've asked him to look at uh, whether or not there could be uh, not a official mid-block crossing, but some sort of uh, uh, pedestrian island refuge, uh, so like a raised median that uh, pedestrians can... Uh, uh, cross at the avenue and have a safe location to wait while the other uh, lanes of traffic clear. Um, and I, I believe he had uh, someone take field measurements a couple weeks ago. Um, we've also asked him to take over the timing of the signals. Uh, I did send an email to Matt on, uh, uh, I believe it was either Saturday or Sunday, the days are blending together right now, um, to ask if there's anything he needed from the village at this point. He said he was you know, purposely trying to let us get our stuff done, uh, but he was going to follow up with me on some items later this week. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think they look specifically at the uh, uh, the, the timing yet. Um, you know, the, the issue with the pedestrian refuge is it's an issue of drainage because uh, you have to have a, in a location where it meet, the crown of the road meets the refuge because if it didn't, all the water would uh, you know, just roll up against the side of the pedestrian refuge and, and pond. But uh, so we're, we're looking at that right now. Well, I know that, correct me if I'm wrong, I think from discussions at the traffic commission and the vision zero meetings and with Shannon Purdy, um, the pedestrian island was going to be at the curve of Mamaroneck Avenue. So yeah. yeah. And I guess that's one issue. And I know that when we look at that, the fire department has concerns about yeah, they, they an island concerns. being there. So we have to be aware of that. I guess I'm more specifically asking about the possibility or practicality of bike lanes on Mamaroneck Avenue. Um, I, I did reach out to uh, the county engineer. Um, I, and he responded back to me. I don't have that. I can't find that email uh, right now though. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll be sure to forward that to the, uh, when I find out, I'll be sure to forward that to the board. Do you remember uh, the gist tomorrow. of it? Because, because I, mean, this I, is, I, I know I it's a major, it, it's a major roadway. And if it's like crazy to think about this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the, the major issue is, especially once you get down past night, well, it, it's a two lane roadway that's somewhat narrow to accommodate a, a bike lane be nearly, it would be very difficult. And I didn't think it was part, it, it wasn't part of the county plan. And I don't, think they were looking to add anything to it but again I'll I'll find the emails that I have from the county on it and I'll I'll, uh, I'll forward that to the board okay Dan Natchez um I I don't know that you could that the road is wide enough for a shepherd's bike lane whether it's in the middle or whatever uh, and um, uh, I I would be really concerned about putting any pedestrian bike lane or, or resident bike line in the middle of a street. Uh, cut, the police are, is a different matter, but uh, but you can do shared bike line, you know, a share, shared lane uh, approach with markings on the road. But I won't, I've, you know, for the last six months, I've spent a lot of time there. I've been almost hit seven times crossing with the light um, at Waverly. Yeah. Oh, that's a horrible intersection. And, it's horrible. Uh, after looking at it and studying it and talking to people, the only thing I think actually works is a four-way stop. And there's a reason for a four-way stop. You have cars coming out of Waverly turning both left and right. So it doesn't matter what side you put the crosswalk on, you're still going to have traffic trying to go through whatever the pedestrian uh, crosswalk is. 
but also you have uh, cars turning right from van ramps. Uh, and it is interesting that because the amount of traffic that comes from uh, Waverly, Van Rance is backed up uh, mm -hmm. and they fight to get in. And if a pedestrian is crossing like myself, they're at really risk. And very candidly, I you know, was very taken back on more than one occasion there in terms of potential injury. Um, and I think I'm pretty agile. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I'm more, maybe more agile than a lot of people that are doing that. Um, and I, I would advocate exceedingly strongly. And, uh, you know, but if we want to do that, we have to talk to the county ASAP. Their plans are already in motion. They have contracts going out. Uh, we don't, we want to try and avoid quote change orders that are costly. Um, and I think that this is something that uh, when I talk, I talked to George about it uh, the other day, and he told me that the county was receptive to looking at it and probably implementing it, but it would require the village to request it. They're not going to go ahead. They're not going to go change their plans now. Uh, you know, the, the we, you know, when he was there, we walked on the uh, south side where the crosswalk was is to be moved, um, and. Uh, you know, that was a that was an eye opener to both of us as to you know safety. Uh, it, it you know it wasn't strike, you know so you can take that into account. But the traffic it doesn't all you know from Waverly is not always turning you know left. There's about you know, maybe third third to forty percent that turns right, and you can see that when it's queued up. Um, and I think that that's something we, you know, if we're really trying to uh, be safe, I think we really need to, you know, think outside the box. We've done this at other intersections uh, like the Boston Post Road and uh, Barry Avenue, which doesn't have near the amount of kids or adults crossing. Uh, and that has worked out very well, even though, you know, people have to, you know, wait a little bit longer. Uh, it works out pretty well. So, but Boston Post Road in Barry, that's a stop light. Yeah, that's the, the both both Waverly, Waverly and Romanic Avenue, and you know has lights. Yes, I, I think what you had said though was adding stop signs at Van Rance. No, 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 no. No, okay. No, no, no. Okay. A, a four-way stop, i.e., you have a you have a pause in all directions for people to cross. That's what a four-way stop is. Well, we're talking, there are different terms for four-way okay. stop. Uh, okay. but, but, but I don't know what you're saying. It. So, yeah, so it, it, it's the proper term is uh, an all-way pedestrian phase. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that I, I, I sit corrected. Uh, and I'm delighted to have, know, you know, be educated to the exact term. But I think yeah. you really need to advocate for that. Now, my understanding, and this is something worth looking into, Again, I think we need to defer to Matt before we ask the county to do anything on this is, and hopefully we can get an answer from him, is whether an all-way pedestrian pause would screw up the timing of lights and create other issues up and down the avenue. I think that's what you try to avoid. Um, so Dan, are you, Dan Sarnoff, are you following this concern? Yeah, yeah like, no, no. And, and that's what the discussion I had with uh, Matt was because you know, obviously, you, you also, like you said, you don't want to uh, create a situation where uh, if you affect the uh, the timing, uh, especially over at, um, if it backs up or has an issue at the Mamaronek Halstead Bishop intersection, where instead of continuing on uh, uh, Mamaronek Avenue, people got off on Halstead and you know, started make, making their way to the residential neighborhoods to try and shortcut. But, the, you know, like I said, that's one of the items that I was going to discuss with Matt. Uh, we should be able to have a conversation later this week, uh, and that was, uh, you know, what we discussed, or what he and I discussed. Via email I, yesterday. I think but that's I, a very important thing uh, to to look at. But as I understand it, the county is going to be re-signaling. That's, you know, well, no, no, the, the, the signals, the signals are the village. Um, the, uh, the what the county is doing as part of this project uh, is they were uh, they are relocating 
the crosswalk and the uh, the pedestrian signal from the north side of the intersection to the south side. Mm -hmm. That's that's what they're doing as, as far as this project. I, you know, I think oh, we, we have to talk to Matt. I think there's it's the very beginning of this intersection. You know, very it's the very beginning of the portion of the road that's the county road. You know, it's rare to come down Mamer to come Mamaroneck Avenue and to go straight or to turn right from Halstead onto Mamaroneck Avenue and get under the railroad bridge without some kind of waiting already. And I think there's a benefit to slowing traffic on that curve. You know, I mean, it, 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 you don't want to slow traffic further up on Mamaroneck Avenue, but that's, that's the blind, dangerous curve. And I think with, increasing visibility on that curve too. I've wondered yeah. whether there should be parking on that curve. You know, people uh, come, yeah, I mean, it seems to me there shouldn't be, but. Um, but that is an area that's so stressed for parking. I know. Yeah. You know, that's an area, that's, that's an area where taking parking spaces away impacts. I know, I know. Yeah, and yeah, the, the, the argument could also be made uh, you know, modern thinking about traffic safety is the, the truth said the less comfortable the drivers perceive everything, the slower they go. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is, and that's why traffic safety, a large component is psychological in nature as opposed to uh, geometric in nature. So, uh, but th and that's that's one of the items that, that uh, Matt and I will, will speak about. Um, Nora, do you have any thoughts on the bike lane? Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I know that the, the the suggestion was to have a bike lane right up the middle. It seems, you know, I it seems incredibly dangerous to me. But um, you know, I think people who are more right. I mean, I don't do a lot of biking around the village, so I don't think I am the the right person to ask about whether I would feel comfortable doing it. Um, and that's how I'm thinking about it. So I, I do think that we, that it would be better to talk to, you know, I think talking to the bike cops would be a really good idea. They do it. They do it more than anybody else. All right. Dan and I know they have different training, but I, 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 it seems to me, especially biking in the middle, where do you go if you need to turn? You know, if you're biking, through the village, you're going to stay in the middle. But if you want to get to Old Marinick Road, or you want to get, like, if you, how do you do that? It's it's hard enough in a car. Yeah. Um, so Dan Sarnoff, um, yes. in your conversations with Matt Carmody, I think there's enough. Um, uh, lack of understanding and naivete and you know on our part in not knowing these best practices um that if matt could on a particularly on this waverly van ranst issue because it's that's just that's just it's a sensitive location it's just really and it's so very dangerous everybody agrees on that i think there's just no sense of what the right thing to do is there if matt could really look at that and and give us a memo. Would that? Could we ask for that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I would ask them to lay out what you know the options could be and you know, provide some recommendations. I would also ask. I, I I know Shannon doesn't live in the village anymore, but she's been very generous with her time, and she's in yeah. the village a lot. I think she's a really good person to ask. She absolutely because, is. I can ask uh, her if she could send an email with her opinion on that. Yeah, or Matt, maybe Matt can loop in with her because I know they work together. Because she knows that intersection so well. She knows the intersection, but the, the, the meeting of next week about that intersection has been, the neighborhood meeting has been postponed, but um, she knows the intersection. She is a biker and she knows more about crashes than anyone I've ever met. Yeah. So um, I think she might have um, a, 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 a perspective that we could benefit from hearing. I, I agree. So I'll reach out to Shannon. Um, Dan Sarnoff, if you could reach out to Matt. Yep. Um, I'll give Shannon the heads up that you are reaching out to Matt and that we're, you know, time sensitive, but very concerned about this and that their thoughts on this would be extraordinarily helpful to the board as we consider this and as the county prepares to repave. 
Are we all? And I, and I know the traffic commission, you know, we had this sort of hiatus, but now that we can meet via Zoom, I know my committees are all, you know, rescheduling. Has the traffic commission? They haven't rescheduled yet. Um, mm -hmm. So I know they have looked at this as, they've looked at this, their recommendation was to move the crosswalk. And mm -hmm. Shannon's recommendation, she was on the traffic commission chair at the time. Her recommendation was to move the crosswalk. It was not to have a, a pause, a four-way pause. And did they talk about a bike lane at all? No, that had not come up. Um, you know, Shannon did approach me about this bike lane and uh, she just, said, you know, hey, I heard that this might be going on. And I mean, we didn't, we didn't talk in depth in at length at all about it. It was just a casual passing comment. Um, you know, she's always in favor of bike lanes. So yeah. whether it works at, you know, on this stretch of Mamaroneck Avenue is another question. And they didn't talk about whether there should be a four-way pause. I think the traffic commission did. And I think, you know, really based on Shannon's expertise, it was thought that that wasn't- It's almost a five-way pause because on Van Rance, there's that V. Yeah, that it, that it, that it really others. doesn't work there to do an all-way pause. And what you need instead is a very well-marked, you know, um, Dan Sarnoff, you know the, the uh, what was it? Seven steps to safety or seven, what was that? That pamphlet that Shannon sent me and it had um, yeah, I, I don't recall the top of my head. I, Do you know what I'm talking I, about? I, I think so. But if I had like the, the general rules for, you know, pedestrians and motors as it relates to. It, it was, it was like seven um, modern ways to slow and calm traffic yeah. and make it safer. And the first thing on their list was these um, like on demand flashing beacon crosswalk signs, which I forget yeah. the technical term for. I'm kind of just brain fried at this point. Yeah, no, I, I, I know the signs you're talking about, Ashley. Uh, I may I, have circulated I, that to the board. Yeah, and I think I, I, I may have, um, uh, I, I know I responded to someone about uh, similar signs I've seen in uh, Danbury, Connecticut by the downtown campus of Western Connecticut University, um, that where they have those, the flashing signs, the flashing pedestrian signs with the, uh, that are actuated when people cross the uh, the road. Yeah, um, because because maybe if we could, you know, paint a very bright and maybe it's a very large crosswalk, you know, that incorporates Van Ranst, you know, gets big enough to include that. Paint it with those flashing whatevers. I think you know, but I'll look yeah, for that. I'll look for that information on the seven helpers and circulate to that to the board again yeah. and let's again. include it as backup for the next time and um yeah. and, and you know and let's okay. also just check with the county because they may have a hard stop about any changes that we're going to make they may well, and, and, so we and, need to know what that hard stop is yeah and you know if the hard stop and you know believe me i mean i'm guessing that the can i mean the county may be delayed in the way everybody has been delayed by this storm but we need to know what our deadline is for making any changes because whatever recommendations we make, they're going to have to incorporate them into the design before they can start this, before they can start the final phase of the work. Yeah, actually I'm, I'm sending uh, the email I sent to Kelly last month uh, with the uh, the flashing signs that I just referred to. Okay, so you'll, you'll see it in a moment. Um, and let's, just, you, let's just, the next time we take this up at the next work session, include that as, as additional backup if we could. So what I think we need to do is ask everybody to have this in, you know, for our, you know, for our next meeting and sit on, on the 27th. Yes, I agree. And I, and I think we need to put this at the top of the list because of time sensitivity. It is time, very time sensitive. I agree, Dan. Okay, so that takes care of 1J and that is going to be for 927 with additional backup. Okay. Um, before time slips away from us, I want to go over the three additional resolutions that we need to add to our regular meeting agenda and get past tonight. So, um, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, I'll see you. Okay. I'm just, I would Sorry. just make the recommendation that you sort of say what they are and we discuss them later because they're 
you know, we are pressed for time in the work session and we have a little more time in the regular session because it's a short meeting and they're pretty time sensitive. So I think we're going to have to address them tonight. They, they are time sensitive. Um, I, I was hoping that we among ourselves could bang these out in the work session so that we don't spend time in the regular session, too much time on these. I'm hoping to keep the regular meeting very short because I know staff are beyond on their fumes right now. Um, but let me, let me explain that we have three resolutions that, that I would just like to introduce at the work session. Do we need to amend our agenda to add these, a discussion of these? Te te technically we do. Yeah, so. I'm happy to make a motion to talk about all three now. Um, thank you. And just for the clarity of the motion, this is to amend our agenda to include discussion of a resolution creating a general fund accounts and supplemental appropriation to fund expenses for village response to Hurricane Henri. The same for um, Tropical Depression Ida and a resolution requesting um, an expedited review of the Community Resource Center's uh, uh, CDBG grant application. Um, and I'll second that motion to amend. Augie, can you call a roll on that? Trustee Winshaw? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Okay. Um, just briefly, we have addition. Um, the Community Resource Center was destroyed in the, the storm. And those folks have been working outdoors and remotely helping other groups tirelessly. Um, and they need to get back on their feet AF ASAP. They have a community development block grant application in and pending with the county. And um, Dan Natchez wisely spoke with County Executive Latimer at a press conference last Friday and asked if we could get this expedited. And the County Executive was um, supportive and asked us to pass a resolution and the Community Resource Center to write a letter asking for expedited review of their grant proposal so they could get this money sooner rather than later under the emergency that we're in. So that's what we are hoping to pass. Um, the Community Resource Center has drafted its letter and we have a resolution that I will read. Um, it is a resolution regarding create, wrong one, um, resolution requesting expedited review and funding approval for the Community Resource Center's Community Development Block Grant application for funding consideration to implement facility improvements at 134 Center Avenue. Whereas for over 23 years, the Community Resource Center, CRC, has met the human services needs of Village of Mamaroneck residents, providing educational programs, case management, and referral service services, and advocating for immigrant communities, low-income families in need, and other underserved populations. And whereas on September 1st to September 2nd, 2021, the remnants of Hurricane Ida brought devastating amounts of rain over a short period of time, creating a major, major disaster area in the Village of Mamaroneck. And whereas the CRC is located at 134 Center Avenue, Mamaroneck, among the hardest hit neighborhoods in the village and suffered comprehensive destruction. And whereas the staff and volunteers of the CRC remain dedicated to meeting the needs of the community and have been operating outdoors and remotely, continuing to provide service to disaster victims, as well as providing interpreters at the village's recovery center, which houses Red Cross and FEMA workers, as well as other state and local aid organizations, and whereas to rebuild its physical structure will cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and such rebuilding is vital to residents most in need within the village of Mamaroneck. And whereas the CRC has previously submitted a grant application seeking a community development block grant, CDBG, of $248,160 to implement needed facility improvements, which includes a 50% match by CRC, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village Mamaroneck fully supports the CRC's efforts to obtain this CDBG and urges the Urban Community Consortium and Westchester County to provide emergency funding for this work as soon as possible. Now, I know this resolution and um, cover letter, you know, everything came kind of in the last minute and we've all been swamped. But I wanted to be sure you guys had seen this. I think it came this afternoon and see if there are any changes that you want to make before we talk about this in the regular meeting. Dan. 
I, yeah. Think, yeah. I think it's a great resolution and I have no problems. The only thing that I would like to suggest is where it says at the end, the last thing where it says as soon as possible. Uh huh. Say as soon as humanly possible. Add the word humanly? No. I, I, I'm sorry? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it, it actually adds, it's a, it's a double meaning. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, that's fine. Nora? Yeah, that's fine. I think we should do this. Um, yeah. Um, they, I, I got to tell you. It's a no-brainer. Durandi has been remarkable. And the, uh, and Janet, the whole CRC, they're, they are, you know, it's at the courthouse. It's really um it's it, it pulls on your heartstrings to be there and so many of those folks need interpreters and the crc is providing those interpreters the crc you know I, i've seen gerandy and, and her folks manning the uh the intake computer you know for folks that don't understand or, or know what's going on down there um the, the courthouse has become um a rescue center, an RC, that is housing FEMA and um, the Red Cross and uh, social workers from the county and the SBA moved in today. It was um, a bunch of state agencies had put up a tent and were on the front lawn. Um, there's a group helping with mental health issues, providing snacks and water to folks. It's really an amazing operation all jammed into this little courtroom and it's it's um so the stem alliance came in and set up a, a login system where folks can get in line they're assigned a number they're assigned a qr code and they can go on online anytime and check live to see what number is being served and if you know it, it's to save them time that if they want to, you know, get a place in line and then go home for a day or two until their number is being served, they can check online and know whether it makes sense. You know, in the meantime, they can take care of their kids, go to work, clean up, do what they need to do instead of being online. It, it's a, a great, great system that the Red Cross has been so impressed with. They have asked to see it. You know, I think they're interested in using it in the future themselves. So, um, STEM Alliance has set that up and Gerandi and the CRC have been there providing assistance and keeping that running from the get-go. It's been remarkable and um, it, it's been great. So this is great. Thanks, Dan Natchez, for bringing this to the county executive's attention. This is, um, this is, this is a good thing. Um, what? Great. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> Um, you're a little bit muffled, so it's it's a little bit. Sorry, I, I sorry about that. Can you hear me better now? Yes. yes. But um, the other two things we have are creation of general fund accounts. Our village manager and our clerk treasurer, Augie, are so ahead of the game and on the ball all the time, and that they they know it, from the first penny that we start spending on these disasters, they know to keep those things segregated. And so when it's time to file applications for reimbursements, I mean, we are in the door immediately. We're there, we're good. So we have two accounts, one for Hurricane Henri response and one for um, Tropical Depression Ida response. Um, uh, the Henri, though sizable at $250,000, pales in comparison to the account for Ida, which is $2 million. Um, so we have two resolutions, one creating each of those accounts that we need to pass in our regular meeting. And Dan, I see your hand up. So go That's ahead. Not up yet, but I, I was oh, okay. Uh, two, one correction. Sure. Uh, these are not general fund accounts. It is uh, resolutions to create new accounts with funding from the general fund. And so I would like Two suggested changes on um, 8747. I want a label, but for. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. So which one are which one are you on, the Ida or the Henri? The, the, the vote one, two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. So the caption right. would be the resolution caption. recreation of a new account from the general fund. No, bear with me for a second. Yeah. It, it says from and to at the bottom of the um, page, correct? Yep. Where it says to, it says account number 8747, which is the new account, uh -huh. but it is unlabeled. I would like it labeled the Henry uh, Storm Recovery. So it's identified that the only things that are being paid out of this has to do with Henry Storm Recovery. And the same thing for the large one, which would be Ida Storm Recovery. So 8748 Ida Storm Recovery. That is correct. And uh, Augie, are, are, you, are you on with us? Yes, he is. So account 8747 was not listed on the resolution, but the name of the account is Storm Henry Flood Emergency Recovery. Okay, that, that's fine and with me. 8748 is... Uh, storm Ida response and recovery. That's fine. I, I have no problems with those headings as long as they're there. They're there. Yeah. Okay, so Dan, do you need the resolution changed or you're fine? The, the, the resolution change has to be made after the two numbers, 8747, 8748. All right, they so have to have the headings. So, um, tell me again, it was on 8748, it's Storm Ida response. Storm Ida. I, I, whatever you read. Response and recovery. And recovery. Okay. And is, is Storm Henry Flood Emergency Recovery. Okay, got it. And I'm sorry that they have this, uh, that they have to do this, but I'm glad they have this expertise. I mean, this is, you know, the third, fourth, this is the fourth FEMA. It's, been, it's just then. been like, I'm mm -hmm. waiting for the, the, the locusts at this point. It's mm -hmm. just out of control. I just have a technical question for uh, Augie. Yeah, sure. Are these general fund accounts or segregated accounts or separate accounts? They're general fund accounts and they're separate accounts. Say again? They are general fund accounts and they are separate accounts. Okay, so why don't we say on the resolution at the bottom, therefore it be resolved uh, after general fund budget by creating the following general fund segregated account. Just add the word segregated. General fund segregated. Okay. And you want that on the other revo resolution as on well? On both resolutions, yeah. General fund segregated. And, and I thank staff for creating them because I was going to raise it if they had. But they're, I'm glad they're headed the gate. You know, I mean, they are so ahead of the game and and they they are so tired. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, everyone is on fumes around here. Is caffeine and fumes. Look at Dan Sornoff. Look how tired that man is. He, he's I, I, beyond I, exhausted. I don't want to steal Jerry's thunder, but you know, we started our first recovery meeting at 3 a.m. on uh, September 1st, about a half hour after the storm ended. It has been remarkable, remarkable. Okay, now, let me see. Um, Augie, is there anything from our agenda that you th that else that you think is, I, I think we're good for stuff that has to get and that stuff that's so. like really time sensitive. So let's go to, I know Dan Natchez, you're waiting for me to call this one. Marijuana. <laughs> you ready? I'm not smoking it, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I we've lost Nora. So I are, have we lost Nora because I think technically we're no longer a quorum. 
Correct. So Bob, should we wait for her to come back before we can move on? Yes, no, let's, let's wait yes. for a bit of uh, Oops, gonna, she's calling my cell phone. Let's see. I'm, I'm gonna Hi, step Nora. out so I can lock up the vote. Nora? Hello? Nora, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I can't hear you. It's completely silent. Could you send an email to Augie and let him know what's going on? Desk phone. Or, or call the desk phone? But I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. She's obviously having some kind of technical, I hope it's only technical problem. Um, let, let's see if she... Or Nora, if you're watching, you could text me, maybe. She's trying again. Hello? It dropped. I don't know if she can see us, but it dropped. And there's no sign of um, a victor. I'm so glad we got those three resolutions. Uh, I don't know if you have a can you give us an update as to what it is and is there a way we can help? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, they're working on it. They're hoping okay. to touch shortly. They're, I, know, I know there was computer problems uh, in the area. All right, well, let's give this a few minutes and then um, I, I would suggest that after a few minutes, if she's not back, that we adjourn. Well, and then, and, and, let's, and let's see, you know, we have a lot to do, so. I know, but, but if we, but there's no sense us holding up staff and attorneys to sit here and wait. So what I was gonna suggest is that we adjourn, you know, for half an hour, you know, and, and come back. That's all I was gonna suggest. Well, while we're waiting, I just wanna uh, thank staff and compliment them. Uh, <sighs> And all the first responders, uh, you know, and staff. Uh, hold on. Yes, Nora. Oh, uh, okay. I will relay that. Um, is uh, Sally on, or is anybody able? To... No, no, I'm, I'm not. No, 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 I'm not talking to you. Hold on for a minute, Nora. Uh, I don't know if anybody staff can send. Nora's asked if the link to join it can be sent to her personal email. She will then try and come on, link back on through the iPad. Dan, I'm sorry, I just stepped away for a second. So send her an invite. Nora, Nora's having trouble. Can you can you resend the link? Yes. To her personal, her email. personal email though. Nora, I can't hear you. One more time. Okay. Can you, can uh, Sally, can you resend the link to Nora's personal email, not the village email? Yes, can I have her personal email? Uh, can she text it to me or someone even text it yeah, to just, me? Just, just hold on, I'll give it to you. Just hold on for a second. Yeah, but let me, let me do it. It's, it's, um, it's nlucas at lucaswiener.com. That's N L U C A S at L U C A S W E I N E R.com. Got it. I'll send it right over. Okay. 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 She's trying to back right now to log in the correct way. And if she can't, she's the other one is back up. How about that? But while we're waiting, I just want to say not only to all of our first responders and staff who have done an amazing job, but the outpouring from neighbors and people who didn't even know people just coming in to help. You know, we had 216 people from, you know, the church in uh, White Plains uh, to come, you know, showed up, you know, uh, to try and help. Come back in. You're back in, Nora, but we can't see you. Hold on. Okay. But, um, it is, you know, it has just been terrific. You know, people have just been uh, absolutely sensational uh, during all this. Uh, I cannot start my video. Okay, I think that we need to see you or we're in violation of the open meetings law. Um, I don't think you are with the new thing, but I think somebody has to allow me to start my video. 
I think we are because we had that that alert from Sally saying, you know, that we had to be seen and heard. That's correct. Thank you. No, okay, the, the host just asked me to start. Now is it working? No. <sighs> okay, you know what? I, I think we should adjourn. We're, we do not have a quorum. I think we should adjourn until 630. That will give 25 minutes to try to get this, but I, I can't in good conscience. I have staff. Can you just let, hold on a second. In a state of exhaustion. Or I sent it to your other email as well. Nora, we see you. Can you see me now? And we can hear you. Bravo. Let's continue. We were going to go talk about the cannabis law. Can you Dan, see me? We, we can. We can see and okay. hear you. We're good. So, Dan, Natchez, would you like to start? Um, uh, I think that this is you know, a... Uh, major issue. There's a lot of sediment in the village, both pro and con. Um, there are a lot of unknowns uh, in this. Um, uh, and there are a lot of um, there are a lot of unintended consequences that we haven't even begun to un understand yet. Uh, and part of that is uh, the state hasn't you know, been able to come up yet with, the, with what they're going to be requiring and what their rules and regulations are going to be. Uh, my concern is uh, if we do not opt out, we can never opt out. So we can put ourselves in a particular precarious situation with unintended consequences. Um, if we opt out now, we are able to opt in at any time and we can get the, we can deal with what the zoning issues are. Uh, a lot of policing issues, a whole bunch of issues that are needed to be undertaken. Um, and prudently, I think that is probably the best approach that we can take. Nora, do you have anything to add to um, that? Yeah, I, you know, I wasn't able to participate in the last discussion because I thought I had been, ex I had potentially been exposed to COVID, so I had to stay away, stay, stay away for a couple of days. Happily, I was not, oh, and. It, but, um, uh, you know, I had asked um, right after that meeting and a couple of other times that we get some information in terms of the zoning of what the, you know, what the, what the ramifications are of where it can be. It can't be within 500 feet of a school, but that only considers public schools, not nursery schools. Can't be within 200 feet of a church. And the kinds of things we would be able to control are time, place, and manner, but that you know, even according to the NICOM guidance, we don't really know what that is. And so um, our new governor has been proactive and she has just appointed people to the two boards that, that, will, that will formulate the regulations that allow um, the cannabis um, retail and um, consumption lounges or consumption establishments to um, be licensed and how they're gonna operate. But um, it's not realistic that anything is gonna open before the end of 2020 or even the beginning of 2023. And we simply don't know what the regulations are. And there's one thing, I mean, you know, so, you know, I think that one of the things that concerns me is that while everybody, people, I think in general, from the many emails we've gotten, I don't think people understand, they probably haven't read the 140 whatever pages of the law and they don't understand. So they're equating it with, the dispensaries they're familiar with in White Plains or in Connecticut, which are all medical marijuana dispensaries, which have a different, you know, they have a different portfolio. And they are also um, not something we can regulate. The only two things that a, a municipality can regulate are the retail establishments where it is sold, which is distinct from a, a retail establishment where it is consumed. Those are the two things that we can opt out of or do nothing and then just have them within our jurisdiction how in whatever whatever manner the state regulates them and whether or not the state license them it's not up to us to license it's up to the state and but because we have this to that's because we are a municipality that's a village within a town or in fact in our case two towns if the town of Amerinik which has discussed this 
two weeks ago and they're discussing it again in two weeks. If the town of Amerinick does not, if the town of Amerinick doesn't opt out and if the town of Rye doesn't opt out, then we split our tax proceeds with them unless we have arranged, you know, unless we have agreed with them to not do that. So I think, I think that we should have the, the law is very simple. There's a draft law on our agenda, on our backup from NICOM. It's, I think it's almost identical to the law that Larchmont passed. And I think there's great benefit in having a public hearing on opting out so that we can get the real public sentiment about this. And I think, you know, knowing that once we understand the ramifications, we can opt in. And once we understand what we can do in terms of how we can regulate time, place, and manner, um, we'll, have, we'll have, we'll just have more experience and a better idea of what's going on. I believe Port Chester has opted out. I believe a lot of small communities have opted out. It turns out bigger communities are not, are not opting out. Um, Scarsdale had a very interesting conversation about it. You know, we're behind the eight ball. We, you know, every a lot of other people did this in a more timely manner. So I think we're a little bit behind the eight ball, but I think we should um, hold a public hearing on a law opting out. Um, I, I have no doubt that we will hold that public hearing um, on a law opting out. I don't think we're ready to hold that public hearing yet because we don't have the zoning information that you requested, which I think would be um, helpful to the discussion. I also want to point out that we got a legal memo that we had requested at the last um, work session, that we, we received that legal memo this afternoon. Um, I have not read it. I have been writing um, emails to the Red Cross instead. Um, and so I think it would be helpful to be able to review that and discuss it um, so that we can know what we would like to discuss at a work session and just be a little more knowledgeable. I also want to point out that we are missing two members of the board, the mayor and trustee Tafur, from the discussion tonight. So um, I think there will be ample time for a public discussion. Um, once it's on the regular meeting agenda, but I think it's premature to move it to the regular agenda now. That's just where I stand on it. Well, I would request that we have a draft law for the village for our next meeting for, uh, for the September 27th meeting. Um, and I and to talk about the memo, I think it's I think the gist of it is that it, it's not a confidential memo. Is that the sense? That's right. That's right. We covered right. that this afternoon, and so and that can be part of the backup, so the public yeah. can read it and be aware of it um, and be and more it's, informed it's, for the discussion. It's basically, about what the referendum procedure is, whether yeah. you know whether whether we adopt whether if we were to adopt a law, that law would require a permissive would require a referendum. Like we could say we want a referendum. It's a, it's the law is under a permissive referendum, meaning if 2,000 voters decide to push a referendum, there would be a referendum within a time, certain time frame. We could, um, I don't want to say do an end run because that's not the right phrase, but we could determine that we wanted to have a referendum. Make it easier to have a referendum. Well, we could require a referendum. Yeah. Um, I don't know that any municipality who has done this has, has done that previously. And I think just thinking about we, this village hasn't run village elections in nearly 20 years because we opted to, you know, we, we, we moved to the November election. And I, you know, I think we have to think long and hard about having our staff go through the effort of running a, a village election for a referendum given what the extra work they've been doing in the last 10 days and will probably be continued to do for the next 60 days. Well, let, let me ask this question of Mark. Um, so again, my apologies for not reading and digesting this this afternoon, but if the village were to opt out and wanted to provide a referendum so the residents could weigh in. So we want to opt out before December 31st but we want the village residents to have the opportunity to vote on it in a referendum. That referendum 
wouldn't occur until November 2022? No, so it, it depends on, so after the proposed, after the local law is passed, um, there are opting two out. Opting out, there are two ways to go about um, with the petition. So um, after the local law is passed, um, pardon me, one second. Sorry. Um, okay. So after the local law is passed, um, the, a petition has to be filed within 30, 30 days. Um, and it's the same way as uh, the notice for a general election is filed. So if, the, if, if a valid petition is filed with the village clerk within 30 days of the law's adoption, a referendum must be held. So I think what, uh, well, I believe the end run you were talking about is if you submit it to a referendum directly on the board's own initiative. Yes. So there's two ways of going about so that that's the other way essentially. It would essentially go directly to referendum. But the this kind of the sticking point is that when the local law is passed, that determines when the referendum has to be held. So if it's between September first and before November first, according to village law the village law, um Excuse me. So if, it, if, it, if the petition is filed on or after September 1st and, and before uh, November 1st, the referendum, referendum is held at the general election. That's when the petition, after the petition. So um, the stick, the, obviously that, that is conflicting with um, election law, which requires that notice has to be um, sent to the county three months before the general election. So there's no, to be quite honest, there's no clear resolution about that. Um, it's not clear what would happen basically if the petition was filed between September and November. If it's after November, um, and to force, so basically in, in, in our purposes, it's after, if, if it, let's say it's, if it's done after November 1st, the petition, then it has to be held, um, at a special election, uh, not less than 10 and not more than 60 days from when the petition is filed. And would the village be responsible for holding that vote? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Not the town or the county? No, the village, because it's a village election. Yeah. Okay. I, so and I, go ahead. Well, I, so I, I mean, I think that, you know, the from the NICOM guidance, it basically, they, they quote the state law where they said the remainder of the process would be the same as if a petition had been filed on the date that the board submits the act to the referendum. So it's like, it's whether so if we decide to hold a permissive referendum or a per, our permissive referendum is yeah um, by required, yeah. It's, it's the same timing yeah. and it's on That's us yeah. That's um, right. and it's on us yeah um so and i think you know the confusion here is that most villages have elections in march yeah, but, but we don't and we sure haven't had one well, we often I guess, like know, the because, library vote and stuff like that. There are no, no, no. But there, the village did have elections in March up until 1999, when um, a group of people forced <clears throat> this referendum to change the election date to November. So, you know, when I first lived in the village, elections were always in March, and it was I, I remember it was right when Molly was born. So yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's a little confusing. Not to um, age us, but 1999 was a long time ago. <laughs> it was 22 yeah. years ago. So, so okay. So um, I, think the, I think the moral of the story is, if you're thinking of passing the uh, the law opting out, mm -hmm. and if you do so, you're going to schedule the res the uh, referendum yourself. You ought to focus on when you want to have the referendum, because that's that's going to be the critical date. You ought to focus in when you pass the law, based when you pass the law. Yes. You want the referendum to be. I mean, well, I'm assuming you don't want the referendum to be on December 29th. Right. Which it would be if you pass the right, law in first week in November. If if we decide we want to have a referendum. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just tell you by way of disclosure, I do not think we should opt out. I think the state legislature passed this with the intention of, you know, 
municipalities allowing these dispensaries. I think we we haven't just had, I don't think people are confused about medical dispensaries. I mean, we've had backup information about dispensaries, recreational dispensaries in Colorado, recreational dispensaries in Massachusetts. You know, they're not head shops and these aren't, you know, smoking hookah lounges. Um, I think there's just a, a, a bit of hypocrisy in wanting cannabis to be legalized, but not in my town. You know, like I, I want cannabis to be legalized and, but, but I don't want it sold in my village. I just think that that's just not, um, I don't think there's a consistency there, but in any case, it looks like we don't have three votes to move this to the regular agenda for a public hearing next meeting, but we would like a resolution opting out for discussion at the next work session. Am I right? It's a local law. John. Okay. And, you know, you right. don't have, you have, I, I, you have yeah. a, a, lo a draft local law. Right. That's what yeah, I mean. Not a resolution. Tonight, Thank you. But yeah. you don't have anything you could say. We'll hold the public hearing on. So. It, right. Right. So we couldn't, want, we couldn't move it tonight anyway. Right. If the three no. you want, we can have that prepared and, and, for the next meeting. Well, if, if you have time and could do it, it, it seems like, I think, well, do you guys know where Victor is on this? Does he want to opt out? Well, that's. I mean, I, I. I would not be able to represent what Victor wants one yeah, way. Okay. So I think it's you know, two two as far as we know. Um, maybe it doesn't make sense to prepare a local law if we don't know if this is headed anywhere. I think it makes sense to prepare a local law because it's. I mean. It's not, it's a very simple law. And I, you know, I do think we are running out of time. Um, and I, I would agree because it, it allows people to focus more clearly when it gets to the public agenda, you know, uh, and, of what the discussion is at, rather than okay. just have it well, read we, and then finally decide what you want to do. We have a model and we have some examples. This isn't a major amount of work to prepare no. a local law, is it? No. No. All right. So, so let's just try to do that for the next meeting, for the next work session on the 27th. Is that okay, Mark? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move down. Um, if, and if Victor comes, we can ask him. I mean, I don't know that he's going to come, but if he comes in, we can ask him what he wants to do. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I think regardless, you two want to have it. So let's just have it for the work session. That's, that's fine with me. I don't mind. It's, um, you know, it's not a major amount of work, so. Okay, um, capital plan and budget. I don't know that we can discuss that without staff ready to get into these no. discussions. Capital plan principles and criteria, same thing. PLLE, required setbacks from water bodies. Are we ready to move this on? Um, you know, I actually think that's something that is, we've gotten comment about that. Uh-huh. Um, subsequent to the storm. And, um, you know, our planner is about to, tomorrow is her last day. And, um, you know, while I, I, I realize we've been delaying this for a very long time, I think um, we need to have a robust conversation about it, especially in light of the storm. Dan Natchez? Um. I have, I'm not comfortable moving forward with what we have in writing. I have comments for staff. I'm happy to share them now. Uh, hey, uh, let's go. And we can, you know, do it. But, um, uh, I think that what we, this should go not to the planning board because it should go to the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission uh, because it has to do with two things. One is consistency. And unless everybody's changed their mind, we have agreed, but, uh, and I know we, uh, there's been work moving forward to move the wetlands law from the planning board to the Harbor Commission, Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission, and they dovetail so that they should be the, where the, where the, uh, where the application goes, if, uh, if you will. 
Um, I, I think we need to amplify some of the conditions that were there, uh, that uh, the structure should be further back from the existing structure. Can uh, you point to a section? I, I don't have it in front of me. I, it, but there could, there, 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 within the, and Bob can find it. It, there are there are five things or four things that were lifted from other you know from the variance approach, and I am suggesting we amplify it a little bit more. Um, and I'm trying to be consistent with what the village has been doing on applications for the last few years. Um, you know, that, um, the existing structures can be kept, you know, if, if they're going to use them, but uh, uh, if you're going to that new structures have to be further back from the existing structure. Uh, hey, Dan, just to just to simplify things, since you don't have it in front of you, and I, I don't want any of us to be guessing, um, let's just have a productive discussion about this at the next meeting. I think it would be much more helpful if we could all like just, just follow along with what you're requesting. Um, I'll add, I think this is beyond overdue I am I am frustrated that this has gone from a majority of the board thinking it should go to zoning and then changing their minds to planning and now um, at least one suggesting it should go to HCZM. This is something, this is one of the first votes I took as a trustee. And we made a promise that night to fix this. And here we are still floundering about. So this is extraordinarily frustrating for me. Um, Nora, you're frozen. Are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. Yeah, Great. I'm still here. Okay. Um, your, your video is frozen. But but in any case, we're going to kick this over to the next work session. Okay. If you don't want me to share, I won't share. Well, I, I, I'm happy for you to share, but it doesn't make sense if you can't point us to the section, if you're just going to generally section, reference. Section 6, uh, section 240-30. But you have it now? That's the area. I just, what language are you looking to change? That's what I'm asking. Um, I haven't drafted it. If you want me to draft it, I'm happy to. This is, this is how to amplify things. You have, according to that, three things as conditions. I am suggesting additional conditions. Is, is someone in is someone there with you with me no okay i just okay i'm not making the noise if that's what you're if that's what you're asking i'm just okay all right so if you, if you want to let us know what you're what you're trying to get changed i'm happy to you know hear it now as, as long as it's sufficiently specific that we can have the discussion, but. So the first has to do with. I Can I just ask, we, we don't really have Nora on video. Is this. You know what, I'm trying to hook up via my iPad. This is just. No, 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 Nora is on video, I see her. But she's but I'm frozen. frozen. She's not moving. I don't think that's copacetic with the open meetings law. We have a, a still photo. I'm trying to log in on my iPad. Okay, you know what, let's do a 15 minute recess. I need to get water, 15 minutes break, okay? okay can we can we adjourn for 15 minutes, please? Okay. Thank okay. you. Augie, Augie, are you gonna put this on something to adjourn? Everyone can just mute, I guess, in the meantime. Thank you.
Kelly and Augie, I just want you to know that you're live. You're not muted. Yeah, I know. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you, Sally? I'm good. Thank you. Glad to hear it.
Can you hear me, Nora? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. yep. I'm just, I'm. Okay. I'm sorry that you're having so much difficulty. I'm on. I believe the uh, Nora may be frozen again. All right, I'm just going to have to sit someplace else, so I'm going to need to gather my stuff, I think. Okay.
you thought the video started. Thank you. Oops, uh, I disappeared. No, the camera moved. Oh, it sure did. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. How did that happen? OK, we're good. Thank you. Oh, well, we've lost Nora again. No, she's getting, uh, she was on for a minute. Well, okay, now we just lost her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that she, we had her, but that it was black screen and muted. She um, had to get her papers because she's moving her the stuff okay. from one room to another. That's what she said. Okay. Let's wait and see what happens.
Oh, Nora, you're here. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. I don't know. I can't, I'm like, I have three devices going. Okay. Well, we, I think we're, we're compliant now. So let's resume. Let's see okay. how long it lasts. Okay. Um, let's continue with our discussion of the uh, setback law. Dan, you were saying. Okay. Um, that, uh, oh, you're very muffled. Can you hear me better now? Yes, yes thank you. Uh, structures have to be further set back from the existing structure. Um, uh, I set back from the, um, you know, from the water. And what section is that? Do you know? Where all of this pertains to section six, section 320, 3240-30 of the code. Thank you. or wherever our attorney suggests it's best put, okay? Um, you can keep whatever you have. Uh, um, Just to be, if I can be clear, this is for discussion, right? The board isn't directing me at this point. That's correct, that's correct. It's discussion only. I just wanna you know, give Dan an opportunity to voice his thoughts. Um, <clears throat> any additions have to be further set back. I, 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 uh, there should be no parking. Um, there, um, new structures uh, in the buffer uh, have to be 25% smaller than what is presently in the buffer. Um, and to allow future pathways as a, uh, along the water uh, at the expense of the others, not them, just to allow an easement for that uh, type of activity. Okay, so let, let me ask a question on the pathways issue. So if someone has a piece of property that um, backs up on a river and you want there to be a public walkway along the river on that person's property, right? I want the have the ability to have that, yeah. Okay, so how would someone approach the river from the street? The, the whole point of this, Kelly, is to have the ability to do it. So if the village decided- that, That's what I'm asking, Dan, that's what I'm let, asking. Let, let, let me finish, please. I understand your question. If the village decides they want to put a walkway in and have in, in, get all of the easements going from a point of access from a road to whatever, you know, uh, down the river to another access, that it could be done uh, there are many states that now require that as part of any per permit approval for any structure that is being done. Uh, and what it does is it does it, it's no, it does not, the property owner does not pay for anything. All they do is providing a, uh, an easement or, uh, or permission, if you will, in the form of an easement, to allow the village to do that at a subsequent point in time. So, so if I can understand you correctly, you would like every property that is affected by this setback to require the granting of an easement so the public could walk through the property to access the river and walk along the river. Not through the property, walk, walk along the river. There's no easement. But, but the easement would allow access from the street to the river. No, the easement only is, would be allowed along the river. Let's say a five foot strip for the sake of discussion. So how would someone get from the street to the river? You'd have to, that's something that the village can only implement when they can get the access by having a something that's long enough. Okay, uh, but, but generally that is an easement. If the public is going to access this walkway, it's by an easement to walk over that privately owned property to get to the river. No, that's not what I'm suggesting at all. Suggesting no. that all it is is an easement along the river. And how does someone access the easement along the river? Over time, you get the easements from you know, along that would allow at some point an access. Okay. And then, and then it's being implemented. 
Bob, does that work? You know, my recollection is that that's what one of the California takings cases was about, but I would have to do some research to. I, I can tell you the state of Connecticut does it. Uh, others, other states do it. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's you know, whole point of it is um, uh, the whole point of it is to try and create more green tax. <laughs> Can I just point out that we can't see Trustee Lucas again, that we're in violation of the open meetings law again? So I'm looking to, to wait for a minute and see if she can come back. Uh, Bob, what do we do if we can't adjourn? We can't adjourn because we're we don't have a quorum anymore. Is it are we automatically adjourned? Well, you can you can always adjourn if you don't have a quorum. In fact, if, if you knew, for example, that Trustee Lucas was not going to be able to come back, you'd have to adjourn. Yeah. I'm ready to call it <laughs> for the benefit of staff, for the sanity of the already exhausted folks. This is not. So I'm ready to call it, but I suspect that Dan would disagree. Well, I think in all due difference, I think Nora's trying to get in. She's doing your best efforts. Let's see if she, she can do that. Uh, I mean, I'm not happy just sitting here either. Um, I know, but at some point we have to say we give up. I'm at that point. So Dan, let me know when you're at that point because we're all just sitting here wishing we were sleeping or drinking coffee or doing anything but this. You know, if, if we had known that Victor was going to be unavailable, could have had a discussion about whether it made sense to do this at all under the circumstances. Nora, are you back? Nora, can you hear us? Nora, we see you, but you cannot apparently hear us. Nora? Nora? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Um, how much of, uh, Dan, Dan, you're, 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 you're um, I, I will say, I think this idea of allowing the public to walk along the riverfront while good, you know, and, and lovely in principle is pouring salt in the wound and adding insult to injury to these property owners who we have, you know, regulated the use of their property so severely already with this setback law that we're trying to fix. We're not trying to make it worse for them. And I think this makes it worse for them. I appreciate your opinion. Sure. Do you have anything else to say about the setback law, Dan? Um, no, that's it. Those were the five things. Nora, anything? Uh, not right now. Um, okay. All right. Let's then go to, um, we cannot, I will say we cannot go to item 1E, use of public funds on private property, because I am recused on that. So we would only have two people discussing it, right? Okay. Okay. So um, enforcement of multiple dwellings. So wait, law, we we're putting that on for next two weeks. Yep. Multiple dwelling law. We needed stuff from staff. Um, mm -hmm. Use of American Rescue Plan funds. I think we need staff, coherent and logical staff. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, board of Control Sharing Agreement. This is something Tom is on the Board of Control and knows this intimately. I think we need him to discuss that. Mm -hmm. If anyone disagrees, hop, hop on. Um, so I would say let's go to Old Business 1I, filling vacancies for unexpired terms of trustees. This is, um, this concerns whether the mayor fills vacancies or the board as a whole fills vacancies. Yeah, um, I actually, I think we should have the whole board there for that. Okay, so let's move on. Um, complete streets 1I, we already did. Municity 5, we already did. Um, the rental registration program, we already did. Um, engineering and design proposals for resurfacing of Halstead Avenue. That's up to the staff, right? The That's staff really a heavy. staff. Dan? Well, yeah, we've, uh, we've requested, we received uh, proposals from uh, our, our consulting engineer, Keller Sessions. Uh, we also received, asked for and received a proposal from uh, Matt Carmody and the folks from AKRF. I received that. And I've also requested a uh, proposal from uh, HVEA. Uh, we've been working with them. Uh, we have not received it yet, but you know we also have been uh, uh, working with them on a number of other items in the village right now as it relates to uh, making sure that all of the bridges in the village. Okay, so we are awaiting staff um, additional information. Yep. The ad hoc ethics review <laughs> committee. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Dan. Sorry. Have we advertised that for uh, with others as well or not? Well, we invited, uh, we received, uh, we originally requested a proposal from Calvary Sessions uh, and then uh, understanding the board probably like to see additional uh, proposals. We solicited or we asked uh, AKRF and HVEA to uh, submit a proposal. Uh, and I think we've had, uh, probably, I think maybe in uh, you know, July this year, so we, we did not advertise this uh, widely. This is a professional service. Uh, we did invite uh, engineers that we are familiar with uh, that uh, do this kind of work to submit proposals. Does, does it make any sense to put it on the whatever that? Um, you know, we're trying to move this along. You know, the you know we're quickly running out of time to you know get paving done this year. Uh, this is a pretty extensive project, um, but uh, you know, so we we, we did uh, we were uh, soliciting proposals from engineering firms that we know specialize in this type of work. Um, Dan Sarnoff, I appreciate the work you're doing. I I don't have a problem with the way you're doing it. Just yeah. okay. Moving on. Um, interim report of the Ad Hoc Ethics Review Committee. Um, I just wanna say publicly thank them for their graciousness in allowing this to be pushed over mm -hmm. to the, um, the next work session and we will get to it then. I'm, I'm very hopeful. Um, and I'm in retrospect, given that you know we're only three of us, I think all five of us should hear it. I think it's gonna be an important discussion. Um, okay. Constant and intentional harassment of staff. This was originally brought on um, by Mayor Murphy. I think it's an important discussion we need to have. Um, I think staff <laughs> are, are exhausted at this point and it will probably make even more sense to discuss this at the next meeting. Tree law, we, um, we have on the regular meeting mm -hmm. um, to schedule a public hearing. So that's great. We are going to keep the date um, of September 27th for the public hearing as in the resolution um, for tonight's regular meeting and suspect that we may continue it to be on more than one. All right, full-time village attorney recruitment. Anyone? I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a full board discussion as well. Okay, let's move on. New business 2A. Um, well, this is where we're getting into some of the stuff we've done. I'm, I'm working off the the 9th, August 9th. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. I've got, I have an annotated version of it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Thank you, Nora. Charlie, I'm sorry. Excuse me, guys. But one of those is still being held on the regular meeting under old business. I don't know if you want to get to it. It was Which? to do the point work. It was one of the change orders to, okay. do, to do the point work. So it's Wait, still which on. One? Do you know which one it is, Sally? 
Um, Dan, oh, was it two or creep. three? Do you remember? It's the quick creep. Yeah, I, well, I yeah. think it was. I think it was three. I think two was. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember either. I, I, it was the it was the K Crete for the it's the K Crete. Change, change order number three K Crete. Yes. Dan, did we ever get any further figure? The staff was I didn't know if the time to go with them to get to try and renegotiate a, a better rate. I, I I don't have the answer to that. I don't believe so. Um, Let me, you know, I, let me look on the regular meeting. There might be something about that. Kelly, I didn't change anything on okay. that for the regular meeting. Okay. Um, I, I remember Jerry mentioning something, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just looking because there is more than just the resolution in the backup, Sally. Yeah. That was the stuff from the last meeting. There's nothing yeah. new. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Is... Dan, are you so concerned about this that you're not going to vote to pass this tonight at the regular I'm, meeting? Do you know? Not until I get an answer on it. I'm very concerned that the rate seems to be exceedingly high. Okay, so we're not going to have three votes for that tonight unless Victor jumps on. Just, just, I'm just trying to be efficient here. No, I understand. Okay, um, I know that keeps we did, right, Nora? We yeah. did that one. Um, hold on. So let me just go back to my agenda. So um, the first um, adoption of the agenda. So it was 2E adoption of agenda, not discussed to be continued September 13th work session. That was um, a Victor item. Okay, let's wait until Victor's here. Um, parking on Prospect Avenue between Mount Pleasant Avenue and Fenimore. Um, yeah, this is something that, that we've, was, asked, we've asked Matt Carmody to weigh in on, and we have not yet heard from him. So let's do that for the second meeting in October, because it's not likely that we're going to get it in two weeks. Yes, that makes sense. So October, that's 27th, I think. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. Does anyone have a calendar? I have a paper one. I have my phone. Hold on. Let's just so that we're the second uh, Monday in October is the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. Okay. Um, um, and then uh, G, the teleconference meeting options. I yeah, I think it's moot because moot, the yes. legislature and Congress and and, um, and and the governor signed that vote and signed that at least till January at least till mid January when they're back in session. Yes, yeah, so that comes that can come off the agenda. Uh, yeah. Um, zoning strategies to encourage and support all affordable housing development. I believe West Hab is coming to our next meeting to do a presentation. And there's no backup, so I and think there's no backup. So yeah, no. So um, it's going to be we we're going to say we're going to say the 27th though, right? Yes, yes, because I, I believe West Hab is scheduled for or that. whenever they can come. Yeah. Um, policy and support of equal application of enforcement actions. This is a five person discussion. I don't know who put that on. I don't either. Okay. Okay. Weekend code enforcement. That's a Jerry. That's a Jerry. And boy, let me just use this opportunity to shout out to code enforcement. <laughs> they have been going around checking door to door whether people yeah. have damage in their homes. I mean, they have been spectacular and my hat's off. I just, they're unbelievable. So maybe that needs to be the first meeting in October because yeah, yeah, I don't still, think they're going to be. I don't either. Either. They're still going to be slammed. Okay, that's October twelfth. Oh, this has been kicking around forever. Parking citation management services. Do we want mm -hmm. to outsource parking citation management to a company that has been researched by the village? Um, Dan, does the village have a recommendation on? Yeah. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, Passport is the company that we currently use. They are the successor to a company called Complus, who has been our parking citation management service since uh, 2010, 2011. Uh, the village has long since uh, outsourced its parking citation. Yeah. Yes. The, um, I asked for our current uh, agreement with them. Uh, we pay 8.5% uh, uh, commission for uh, collections up to four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, 
and eight and a half percent beyond four hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. I spoke with them about a successor agreement, and uh, they came back with a proposal for a flat fee of eight point eight and a half percent for all uh, revenue collected. Uh, the main difference is that uh, currently uh, we uh, Passport provides the ticket stock at no charge, uh, and they under the new proposal we would pay for the ticket stock. I think I put a, a an analysis of how much that would cost. Yeah. Uh -huh. think it's a significant number. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've been very happy with uh, Complus slash Passport uh, in the time that we've used them. They provide us the handheld ticket riders, which makes the uh, process of issuing parking tickets um, uh, a fairly straightforward and easy process for us. We just scan the registration, auto populates everything. We select a couple of items, the ticket prints, that's it. And then, uh, you know, Complus takes care of all of the uh, uh, follow-up for unpaid parking tickets. They report the scoff laws for us as well, which is a, a, a very nice uh, stick approach to getting compliance because once you report as a scoff law, your registration is suspended in New York State, which is a fairly uh, effective way of getting people to pay their parking tickets. What do you need from the board? Um, I just wanted to bring this to the board's attention and then we can, if the board agrees, we can put this uh, on the next agenda as an action item to approve a, a different proposal. So, so basically we need to renew the contract and it's with a new vendor, but otherwise it's, yeah. it's what we've been, it's with a successor vendor. Correct. And, and so slightly we're just changed terms. Right. Yeah. I'm fine putting yeah. it on the regular meeting for the May 27. 27. Dan. Natchez, are you fine with that? Yeah. Um, what was the rate, though? Uh, currently, we pay 9.5% of all re uh, commission for uh, parking ticket revenue up to 475000 Beyond that, above 475, we pay 8.5%. The new proposal is for a flat 8.5% of all revenue generated. So it's a, we'd be saving, uh, you know, I guess 1% of 8.5% is, uh, we're on 12, 13 percent uh, increase in our revenue below. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a significant increase in the revenue we would be keeping uh, as part of this agreement. So I, I All right, Dan, are you OK putting this on the regular agenda for next time? Yes. 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 OK, thank you. Um, I couldn't hear you. OK. Um, this is an interesting one. Vaccination policy for village staff and facilities. I have a question for um, Bob. Um, did the pre did President Biden's requirement that companies with employees of 100 or more affect us, or does it exclude municipalities? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. I have the answer to that, but I, I, I don't know. Okay, this is just something I think is fascinating. And um, I know it's, um, so when I heard President Biden speak to this, I thought perhaps it would moot this discussion. So let's just get further information on that. We, and, I mean, right? we, had, we had a memo from Jackson Lewis on this and that was from either June or July, I don't remember. Yeah. And, you know, it was, um, I think things have changed a lot in terms of what I think they have. Done. And so I remember, I think, go ahead, Nora, I'm sorry. I, I think maybe we need to you know, ask them to update that, that memo. Agreed. And I think also the, the testing was gonna be exorbitantly expensive, $200 a test. Uh -huh. And now we have you know, home tests that are available for you know, 20 or $25 per box of two. And mm -hmm. maybe those would be acceptable. They would certainly save a lot of money for people who wanted to do testing instead of vaccination, but so, more information to be continued. So, um, so let's um, make sure we ask Jackson Lewis. We'll make a note and do that tomorrow. Okay. Um, uh, Dan, maybe just ask Dan, was Dan? Yeah, I, well, I can right. follow, I'll, I'll follow up with Danielle and- Yeah, oh. thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sewer rent fee for Westchester Joint Water Works. Okay. This, yeah. This is a, a, a Mayor Murphy issue as well, but yeah. go ahead, Dan. The, the, the brief explanation is um, our, our, the, the, the way we calculate the sewer rate 
um, is a little Rube Goldberg-like with um, what's exempted, what's not exempted, a different rate during different times of the years. Um, the Westchester Joint Waterworks is looking to implement a new billing system. And in order to maintain the formula that we currently use would require a modification to their system at, at a cost of about, I think they said something like, you know, eight to $10,000 a year to maintain that, uh, the formula. So I wanted to bring this to the board's attention to uh, see if that's something the board wanted to keep the formula as, as we have it and, you know, talk to the waterworks about how we would implement in the future or uh, would you like us to look at uh, uh, recommending a more standardized formula, which is how the town of Mamaroneck and the uh, coterminous town village of Harrison calculate their sewer rates? Can we can we get an explanation of how the the town of Mamaroneck and how Ma Ma town of Mamaroneck and Harrison do it compared with us? Yeah, I believe the town of Mamaroneck, uh, they and I think the town of Harrison. They use a rate based on, I think it's 90% of the water usage. So they assume a certain percentage of the water usage is uh, use of water that's not going back into the sewer system. That'd be things like irrigation systems. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's how they calculate it. Um, I, I can get the specifics of it, but it's basically, wow. it's basically a percentage of yeah. the, overall, the overall usage. Um, you know, uh, is that because they both have large golf courses and we don't? Um, well, we, we, we have a golf, well, they don't have golf, but what they don't also have is a county sewage treatment plant. And yeah. A, uh, and we do have a golf course. And, and I, right. So, but they have, they both have, well, right. A lot of that, I think they may also exempt, uh, certain properties may be exempt because uh, also a lot of times what, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the Ice House in Mamaroneck, they have multiple accounts. So they'll have an account for the ice production, but there will be a, an account for the general water use in the building for their sanitary mm -hmm. facilities, for their water fountains, their sinks, and all that stuff. So you, typically, the, everyone has, most of these uh, locations will have separate accounts so that they can properly uh, so their facilities. Do we know how this would affect individual users? Um, and whether you know whether rates would go up for individual users more than what we would be spending to change to to update the um, waterworks computer well, modules. It, it, it would be a negative. It would be an equal <laughs> item because you know, right now we're we're you know our our rate is set to meet a certain revenue estimate. So mm -hmm. the estimate isn't going to change uh, whether. Uh, you do one formula or the other. It's just a matter of, you know, how the pie is divvied up and how much that might change. But you're, and, yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, I do think it would be very helpful to have a memo on this. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, is this something that I, I don't want to ask you to prepare it for the next meeting, if, if unless it's time sensitive from the waterworks? Um, they have been pushing the village on this item. Uh, but I, I, I don't think it's a terribly uh, difficult or time-consuming item uh, to do the research on. And, uh, right okay. Well, and it, is it something the Waterworks could help you with? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, okay. you know. That's great. I think yeah. they have information on the usage. And, and like yeah. I said, you know, we, um, most, pla you know, most places have that would have exemptions or something that will have multiple accounts. So it shouldn't be too difficult to... Look we'll at usage information and work back work backwards to get the uh, the number. Thank you, Dan Natchez. Go ahead. But I think it would be helpful and maybe each thing to understand uh, if you do a memo is to have a matrix of comparing the you know how Harrison and Marnick and we are presently doing it. It would be helpful. Yeah. It's, okay. It's easier to understand than reading a long memo that. You may not understand. Yeah, I, I, I think I may have uh, put a memo together on this at some point that's with the agenda, uh, explaining the differences and how uh, Harrison, uh, Town of Maranek, and the village calculate their rates. I, I know I have the information that that's, that's not difficult to get out. Okay, Great. so for so either the next meeting or the, or the subsequent one, depending on your schedule. Yes, yes. 
Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dan. All right. And then I think the last item that we have is requesting officials to intercede in public health concern on Revere Road. There's no backup. We need information, I believe, from staff who are not here, as well as some, at least one person who's not here. So I think we need to put that off. For again, yeah. the next convenient the next meeting would be ideal if we could. If the staff, if staff can do it. Yes. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I will second. Augie. Come back. Can we come, are we coming back? Sorry. We are, uh, 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 yeah, we're going to come back at eight for the meeting. At eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Good evening, folks. Okay. Yeah, the, the meeting was noticed for eight, so that's what we have to do. Okay. I just, right. I just yeah. want to check. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> On um, a difficult mic.
morning and come.
Oh, I said I'm muted. <laughs> Seven minutes to go. So, Nora Lucas two. Nora Lucas two. Um, okay, I'm saving this. You know, don't let me leave without giving you signed things today. Okay, question for you. If you could mute it real quick. So I'm on twice. I'm on twice. That may not work. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now very well. And I can see you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Okay, so that I have a backup in case I go out. Thank you. 
Thank you. As soon as the um, TV screen here says eight, okay? I've been waiting for it to change, you know. What? I can do the pledge first, right? Um, I mean, okay. Good evening. It is, um, this is the September 13th, 2021 um, Board of Trustees regular meeting. Um, we are meeting at a time of profound tragedy and sadness and devastation in the village of Mamaroneck following um, flooding from the remnants of Hurricane Ida. Um, we are about 10 days post the storm. We have village residents who um, do not have homes, who cannot stay in their homes, who are hungry. We've had a remarkable outpouring from our um, charitable institutions, from our residents, from our village staff who have been working um, 12 hours at a time, seven days a week, um, running on nothing but fumes and caffeine. At this point, it's been nothing short of remarkable. We've had our county, state, and federal um, representatives all come to the village. Um, it, it's... It's been quite, quite, a, quite a 10 days. Um, we have FEMA on the ground. We have um, the Red Cross on the ground. We've had Con Edison on the ground working with our building department. It's been a remarkable effort. I hope everyone is safe tonight and doing as well as could be expected. My heart goes out to everyone in this village and everyone who has just made me so incredibly inspired and proud of their efforts. So um, thanks to all involved. I, I would ask residents, um, and I, I will shut up, um, to thank village staff when they see them. They've, they've gone above and beyond anything imaginable. And again, they, they're, they're pretty fried. Um, let's uh, state the Pledge of Allegiance and then we'll get this meeting started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Um, for those who watched, we are just coming off a three hour work session, um, which lasted about two and a half hours. The staff has been here, they're exhausted. We have a very brief agenda tonight. Can I have a motion to open the meeting? So move. I will second, Augie. Trustees Wencher? Yes. Mattress? Yes. Lucas? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Jerry, you're on very briefly. Would you like to just give us an update? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you. There, there's a couple of, um, uh, throughout the last two weeks, many, many people have received our daily updates, as well as the updates on our website um, and uh, through the press. Uh, they've been able to cover what's going on here in the village, and and obviously it's it's a devastating time. Um, the staff and the employees and the volunteers um, have been phenomenal, and and uh, we're starting to get worn out. And um, uh, with the exception of DPW and Parks, who needed uh, a very um, a very brief one day uh, rest, uh, all of us have been working. Uh, uh, seven days a week. Uh, this is my um, 14th straight day. Um, and uh, I've put in, uh, in 
in excess of 120 hours over my 40 hour work weeks. <coughs> and all because um, I'm devastated by, by what people um, are going through. And as you know, many of you know, uh, I live uh, very close to the Washingtonville um, community and uh, um, I go to North Shore Farms and uh, I uh, drive around the community a lot and I see that there are units, whether they're first floor or basement or second floor uh, apartments that have been destroyed. And uh, I don't know how they did it, but they got everything out um, onto the street um, in, 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 in an incredibly fast, uh, at an incredibly fast pace. And what that um, required us to do was to go faster than they could actually put it out onto the street uh, so that we could um, eliminate the public health uh, hazard that's, uh, that's there. And uh, with the help of many uh, um, mutual aid DPWs and our DPW, um, uh, we've been able to, to keep up. Uh, and uh, in, some, in some areas, we've gone through four or five times. So the amount of trash is, is overwhelming. Uh, I just, um, uh, someone sent me a text that, that, um, that um, Port Chester has picked up 3,000 cubic yards. Uh, we've picked up, uh, we've picked up probably 75,000 cubic yards of debris. Um, the amount of debris, um, we choked the incinerator in Peekskill. We choked the dump uh, at, uh, um, at Mount Vernon, in Mount Vernon, and even our local um, facility was asking us to, to back off because we were bringing the material to them so quickly. And that's only because um, the people in the village, the employees of the village um, and the neighboring communities were working so hard to get that stuff off the street. Um, we have transitioned now um, into a little bit of a different operation. Um, with the 535 homes that have been um, impacted uh, by the flood, um, we have about um, 139 that still are without power uh, waiting certification from the electrician because they've been red tagged and their meter has been booted. Um, or in, in, in Con Ed terms, booted, um, they're actually disconnected from power. So we're transitioning from a large scale operation to now a house to house operation starting on Wednesday. And tomorrow I'll be preparing the emergency operations staff as well as our, our um, regular staff um, to go door to door and try to get this um, try to get as many people back with electricity as possible um, with, the, um, with the proper certification of their electrical system. So, so um, Deputy Mayor, I wanna read something so that I can have it at this meeting um, uh, so people, people can understand. For residences that are significantly impacted by floodwaters, village building inspectors have red tagged numerous buildings throughout the village. If your electrical system was compromised, a licensed electrician we need to make necessary repairs in order for a building's red tag status to be removed and for power to be restored. For a building's red tag status to be removed, the owner must first receive approval from a licensed private electrician and second, obtain a certification letter from us at the village. This certification letter must be submitted to Con Ed before electricity is resupplied um, to the formerly red tag building. Um, we're here from eight to five, we've extended our hours. And if you need to speak to someone at the village building department, uh, the phone number is 777-7731. And of course we'll be open tomorrow and we'll, we'll be open all the way through Friday from eight to 5 p.m. Um, it's 777-7731 if you have a question about the red tag process. A licensed electrician can drop off the certification letters at Village Hall at the Regatta at 123 Mamaronic Avenue, uh, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. That's extremely important, um, but uh, for the 139 properties that are still red tagged, we will be going personally uh, in groups of two to their homes to see what the situation is. 
Um, I will be joining one of those teams because we will have a Spanish speaking uh, employee and an English speaking employee on every team. As far as the recovery center, we have a disaster recovery center that is extremely busy. Um, as the mayor point, has pointed out a couple of times, we're the only village uh, in this disaster with a disaster recovery center. And so, so far, uh, as of the numbers today, over 700 people have registered for assistance and uh, we've interviewed and spoken to 475 and they were assisted by a variety of agencies. So there's still about 225 that have been sent home uh, waiting for their number to be called so that they can come back instead of waiting online for hours and hours and hours. Um, the state of emergency that I issued was, uh, was declared on um, September 1st and we were devastated on September 2nd. I wanna issue, I wanna, I wanna um, announce the FEMA number. Um, the F FEMA disaster recovery number is 1-800 621-3362. That's 1-800-621-3362. Or if you want to speak to FEMA directly, as well as the Red Cross or any state agency that is here assisting us, and there are numerous, um, we're open uh, from eight until closing. And that's a uh, various times. Uh, sometimes we close at five, six, sometimes at seven at 169 Mount Pleasant, which is the uh, courtroom. We've converted the courtroom into a disaster recovery center. Um, as I've said in the past, a, a lot of people helped us get to where we are. Um, we are actually seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And by Friday, uh, we will probably be in the best shape any community could ever be within a two, two week, um, event. Early on, uh, we spoke about um, this disaster could take six to eight weeks and um, um, somehow, and I know how, um, but somehow um, he was available to us and uh, the former director of the Office of Homeland Security in New York State. Um, I met him that night uh, while we were doing water rescues and he quickly grabbed me and grabbed uh, Chief Costa and said, uh, we need to talk and we need to talk now. And uh, he gave us the, the half hour primer and said, this is what you're gonna need to do and this is how you're gonna need to do it. And obviously the fire chief was extremely busy because we had, we had water rescue units from Yorktown and, and uh, uh, Ulster, uh, not Ulster, uh, Rockland County um, uh, coming to us. So, uh, so Director Copey and I, um, we put some things together. We quickly opened up a shelter. We had um, a plan in place. The director privileged us um, with, his, uh, with his skill and his knowledge for four days, um, worked just as hard as we did. And then at some point, um, turned it over to us and said, uh, you know, this is on you now. So I could never be more grateful to someone for what he did. Um, I don't really have too much else. If any of you have questions, just email me. I'll try to get back to you. Um, but I'm here eight to eight every night. Um, I think um, I know that Con Ed um, sent their task force to us the best task force that we could ever have. And that's the reason why we have 236 people who have been red tagged back with power. Because the minute we get the certification letter from the electrician, within an hour, the, 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 the electricity the electricity is turned back on. And uh, I'm not getting inundated with, with uh, complaints, with phone calls, with, with desperate um, uh, needs for electricity. In fact, today, this morning, we delivered generators to people who have medical needs who have medicine in their refrigerator, which is a thing now. They have their medicine in the refrigerator um, and they need to keep the refrigerator on. And when we go to a street to try to repair or to try to turn on several houses, we have to shut off everyone else's house uh, because of that's how, that's how the electric grid works. So when we do that, we provide them some notice, but not a lot of notice. And 
I have a team from the parks department that goes out and sets up generators at people's homes just to make sure that um, they can keep their medicine um, refrigerated. And it's extremely important. Uh, something that I knew about for a little while, but there's a lot of people who have that, that situation. Um, other than that, uh, I could keep going, but you know, there's too much to talk about and there's too much to, uh, to, to still do. Um, but just know that, that um, the village has, uh, has overcome a, a significant, significant disaster. Five to seven feet more um, of water than, than, the, uh, than the flood of 2007. And, and behind me is the, is the photograph my wife took of um, the Avalon's parking garage at 7 a.m. Uh, seven hours or six hours after the event basically stopped. We still had six feet of water in the Avalon parking lot, um, down from eight feet at its highest. And uh, it took five hours for this water to go away. And every single person in that building um, was stranded. They were stranded there. And many, many of them have lost their vehicles um, and everything uh, uh, in their vehicles. And that's nothing compared to what people lost in their apartments, in their basements, in their um, garages, in their living space, and have moved upstairs now to, to live with other families. Um, you know, if they had two kids, uh, now there's six or seven kids living in that apartment um, just because uh, that's what they need to do at this time. There's one thing, though, that um, I should share that, that I've never seen a group of people in the area where I live um, that were more resilient and, and, and taking it in stride. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it is, there are um, people barbecuing on their front steps. There are, um, you know, neighbors just bringing each other food. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I've never seen anything like it. That's it, Kelly. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I, I think we live in a, a remarkable community and um, our residents are to be just loved and appreciated more than ever. Um, Jerry, I've often said you're the best village manager in Westchester County and world. You're the best village manager in the world now. I, you have done a superb, superb job. So um, thank you very much. I just wanna let people know that Mayor Murphy is not here um, because he is traveling. He had long, 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 expensive plan, long, long ago, expensive plans made. And I know that it was with a heavy heart that, um, that he went ahead and, and took this trip. Um, I know he was very conflicted about whether to go, but it was an awful lot of money. And I'm really glad he went because we're functioning fine. Um, we miss him dearly, but we're functioning fine. And he needed a break. He really did. And he'll come back reinvigorated. And um, so tonight, bare basics, we'll get through the agenda. And we will start with now communication to the board. And I see that Andy Spatz is here and has his hand up. Could we allow him to speak? Thanks, Augie. Okay. Good evening, members of the Board of Trustees. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you, Andy. First and foremost, Deputy Mayor, members of the Board of Trustees, Jerry, uh, and our fine community here in the village of Mimaranek. Uh, unfortunately, in my lifetime, this is the third significant event that's I've been a part of and I will reiterate what you've shared and what Jerry shared we are so fortunate to have our DPW our first responders the uh, police fire department this was all hands on deck and I am speechless in terms of the selflessness that people have shared and given to us and very thankful for that. And we've yet risen above, I hate to use that phrase, but we have risen above 
this unfortunate event and illustrate the true um, colors of our community. And with that being said, I preface as one of the founding members of the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee, as one of the individuals I was honored to testify in Washington, D.C. in 2017 on behalf of the Army Corps Project. We cannot afford to allow this circumstance just to be a photo op for our elected officials. We must continue going forward. We must achieve what we did in 2017, which was impossible in itself. We had two bites at the apple. Most communities don't even get one. If we can arrive at this on a collective level, we have to put our differences aside. This is our future, our future. My kids who are fifth generation of Maronick, their future here in this community depends upon it. As I'm sure you're aware, uh, Deputy Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees, this impacted not just residences, but businesses. The businesses are part of the lifeline here in this community. They are viscerated. They've lost everything. Businesses that were generations have lost everything. But they assured us, as one of the largest landlords here in the community, working with hand in hand with our tenants to rebuild. They are going to remain steadfast, stay in this community that has been so good to them. We need to be good to each other. And I just want to preface that, again, Mamaronic is so unique because we have the beauty and the splendor of the residents, but we have the vitality of a business district. We have to remember that. Generators would be, would be great in those areas. A presence would be great in those areas. This is going to take a collective effort. And this isn't coming from someone who wants to be a Monday morning quarterback. This is someone who was crawling around uh, waist deep in that unfortunate circumstance last week, much like in 2007. Um, Deputy Mayor, you are our liaison to the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. You're going to be our champion to help facilitate this in conjunction to your members of the elected uh, board and the higher elected officials in the state and federal wise. And whatever we can do, whatever I can do to help assist in this, I will absolutely be there. No different than in 2017. There's so many people that wanna help and participate in this. So I, I plead with our community, whatever differences you may have, we have to come together on this issue, if anything at all. We may not be able to always agree what color the sky is, but we know that our future of our children, of ourselves, depends upon this. But I thank you. I thank members of the trust, uh, the Board of Trustees, uh, Jerry, his team, our first responders, and our neighbors, our community, of really allowing us to rise above the occasion. And we will return wiser, stronger, and better. And I thank you for allowing me to speak. I probably went over five minutes, but thank you. But this comes from the heart, and it comes with true meaning. So thank you. Um, thanks, Andy. If I can um, <clears throat> mention, we we last week had our county, state, and federal representatives, all, every one of them here, and every one of them pledged to move this Army Corps project forward, pledged their support to move it forward. Um, that was a remarkable feat, and it happened, and I'm glad it happened. Um, we are going to need every voice to be loud on this. And um, I'm asking residents tonight to save their photos and their videos. And if emotions are raw, to write a blurb about um, how this has affected you and the need for some meaningful mitigation in the village through the Army Corps project, um, save it because we're going to be collecting that as a village. Those, um, the mechanics for how to do that will be um, forthcoming. Um, so I ask the village residents to be prepared to participate in that effort. Um, so. Thank uh, you very I, much, Deputy, for, sure. for pointing that out. And yep. that was a very moving moment, seeing all these high-ranking elected officials, including our uh, governor present here in our community. Um, you are, you as our elected officials are our voices. You're our voices 
And again, you're going to be the champions. We are behind you. Whatever you need from us, um, we're here. Thank you, Andy. All right, let's move to um, Gina Von Eif, if you could, please. Can you hear me? We can, thank we you. Can. Okay, I wanna begin by saying, I can't tell you the tears that I've shed over the DPW workers that we have, and God bless them because they have been phenomenal. I've never seen anyone that was able to help us so quickly, keep supportive attitudes, and they worked so hard. And by the end of the day, you'd see the same people and they had just barely could move. They were so tired, but they kept us going. Uh, I've lost a lot. A lot of people around me have lost a lot. And this was for the first time for me having it this bad. I sat on my stairs, looking out the window, hearing people in the park and Columbus screaming, help me, help me. And I had no cell phone service and I couldn't dial anybody to help them. So I just shook and said a prayer and said, dear God, I hope they're not dead when I didn't hear them calling anymore. Now I'm going to tell you a couple things. And I want the people listening to know this. We have a big responsibility in this village to follow the code that we have, because it seems that we have a planning board, a zoning board, and other officials who do not follow the code. I have specifically warned this board, all of you present last year, that we had items in the floodway at the food tent, which is a phenomenal, I love it. The food tent is a wonderful thing for our community and we need to keep that. But we do not need to keep propane tanks and storage units that float. We had two storage units that I had warned were in the floodway, not just the floodplain. And those two storage units dislodged. We don't know what time the need one lodged under a needle lane. That is a very crucial point where our flooding occurs. So we don't know what implication that had in the ability for the water to drain or the back flooding that it caused. Only a hydrologist might be able to help figure that out. But did it affect us in some way? Yes, it did. The second uh, storage tank, storage unit, which is quite large, dislodged and Mr. Aiello, a newspaper reporter, a news reporter had a video on it and it was lodged in the station plaza bridge, blocking an entire tunnel channel. And the crucial point where the water turns and guns all goes under the Holstead Avenue bridge. This is unconscionable to me. They need to find another place to put these storage units, tables and supplies, it's not food but they cannot continue to remain in a place that could damage us again if this can happen again during a hurricane season. There is no, it's black and white. This is common sense. This is caring for the village and this is your responsibility to make sure that these floatables, which nobody would assume that something that large would float, will not dislodge again during our hurricane season. And I'm gonna make a comment about the photo ops with all these people that came from all these states and these politicians, because they did it before in 2007, they did nothing. Given what's going on, I don't know, Kelly, if you even know, if you've been here long enough, I've been here 64 years. The reservoir we used to ice skate on at the top of Marinick Avenue was 65 feet deep. It held a lot of water back. That needs to be dredged. This is not a Mamarnik issue. This, you at the bottom of the watershed, we have to work with other communities. It needs to be much more multi-focused than just the plan the Army Corps had, which doesn't fit us anymore. We need another hydrologist to come, see what happened, put our gauges back in the river, which were taken out of the river, so we could warn everybody on their smartphones at this point that the water is rising. Every other community does it around the country. You notice on weather.com, you know, the weather channel, they talk about the river gauges, the river's rising. We could do the same thing, but we're not. And there's no reason for that. That's one little thing you can do. But we need a hydrologist now to look at the entire picture because the water had tremendous velocity this time and the Jefferson Avenue bridge abutment was removed. That makes the water go faster, according to the hydrologist report, which you have on the website and every village person can read. The Army Corps plan of channelizing had a lot of issues, and most of them were that we will flood faster. Nothing is addressing 
the narrow opening of the Halstead Avenue Bridge. We will continue to flood. We must not give residents that hope that the Army Corps is coming to save us. It will not happen. And the other thing that needs to happen is you need to tell the village people the truth, that we have no idea what the cost is for the village on this because there was never a figure on how to remove the toxic waste of what they're going to deliver, dig out of the rivers or move the sewage lines and the trunks for the county and the village that run along the rivers if they're damaged and broken and have to be moved. This could bankrupt the village and again, do nothing to solve our problem. We need the hydrologist, Paul Rubin, to come back. He needs to talk to the board. He needs to examine the data and go from there. It's basically starting again. To go with the plan as it was written by the Army Corps several years ago, the Battelle report and the peer review, the hydrologist report all said that it was modeled inaccurately because the river gauges were not there, that the plan would cause more flooding. It would destroy us. In the, in the environment and again, not solve the problem. They recommended that we could dig underneath the bridge and make a tunnel because they have that equipment now that would help get the water out of the Halstead Avenue bridge faster, which is the bottleneck. Getting rivers channelized, having bring water coming faster down concrete rivers to the same bottleneck at the Halstead Avenue bridge will only make us black flow faster. We, the mason was built seven feet a fill in three acres. You have the three jalapenos, you have the bricks more raised, you have the storage unit in the flats. We have development laws. We do not have engineering reports that were done. This is the problem in this village, putting affordable housing in the flats, bringing more people into floodplains. Here's our thing. We were waiting to see what the Mason would do. Now let's get some hydrologists and some scientists to tell us what it did and how it contributed to 11 feet of water over at the Sweetwater going into the village and up to the post office. It is really disingenuous to say to anyone, the Army Corps is coming to save us. It will not save us and everybody who lives in the floodplain knows it. So this was just some grand photo op for everybody. And those storage units that are holding tables and supplies need to be removed so they don't come up again and float down the river and block main channels in an already constricted vital part of the river that causes our back flooding. That's what I have to say, because I watched as I have relatives and men that are working so hard, they're almost dying. I'm hearing people screaming, help me, help me for hours. I'm still shaking from this. I will not forget it. And a photo app is not going to make me sit here and believe that someone's coming miraculously. We need to start helping ourselves and start dredging that reservoir and getting the dam fixed. Might be a big help because anybody that hasn't seen that would be amazed at how much water that will hold back. So Thank I'm going to stop now because this is going to be for the night, but I really want to see, hear you address these storage units that got stuck onto the two bridges and what you intend to do about not making it happen again, because we do not know the effect that they had by blocking the Anita Lane Bridge and the Station Plaza Bridge and how that made a difference that after the event stopped, the water could not get out. That's what cannot be avoided. And I don't wanna see a photo app of people shaking each other's hands and saying, yeah, we're calling the Army Corps, we've done our job. Nobody Thanks. else lives here. We live here all the time. Thank and you, you have Gina. a good night on that one because we're not well. Thank, thank you. All right, let's move. Um, we have no public hearings tonight. Um, let's go to audit of the bills. We have a resolution authorizing uh, budget transfers first. We are moving from waterfront camp seasonal uh, $10,000 to recreation admin overtime. We are moving contingent 3869, that's 3869, um, to Marina Docks. We have, uh, that's for utilities and water, and we have contingent 5500 to Marine Education, part time 5500. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about these transfers? Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Nora. Second. All right, Augie. Trustees, one trip? Yes. Natchez? 
Lucas? Yes. Okay. Um, we have um, an abstract of audited vouchers. These are the manual vouchers totaling $37,000. $625.93. Um, I'm glad that we are able to meet tonight to at least pay our bills. Thank you, Augie. I know, I know that this has been hard to put together. Do we have any comments or questions on this? Uh, Go ahead, Dan, sure. Uh, on this one, there are, there are items that I understand um, the reason why they need to be paid but their uh, credit cards don't qualify under the state law for a manual payment uh, after the fact. Um, and uh, there should be ways of being able to do that because we meet twice a week, I mean, twice a month uh, to be able to pay the credit card bills in the normal order of the bills. And I'm happy to let it go, you know, to do it this time, but there, he, all of us bear a, um, you know, a, uh, you know, liability of doing this. And we, should, we need to follow the state law, period. Bob, do you have any opinion as to whether this, what we're doing is violating state law? Well, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't think it implicates the section that Dan cited in his email, 5-526. I did look, <clears throat> I mean, it's really a controller question. I did look at the controller's website and there's nothing I could find that says you can't pay bills with credit cards. Uh, there are innumerable audits on his website that talk about credit cards and, and how to process that. But they didn't, the ones I saw all looked the same and didn't have a level of specificity of instruction that I could tell whether there was a particular way of handling this. My suggestion is that Augie reaches out to the controller's office and finds out what guidance they can give about how these should be processed. It was really a controller question. All right, thank you. And, and I'll just point out that the credit cards have been used in this emergency. You know, I, I'm on an emergency. They, they've been necessary, absolutely necessary. But they, I, I understand the concern, Dan, and I think it makes sense for Augie to reach out to the controller. Thank you, Bob, for your research on it. Are we okay um, approving these tonight, given the concerns? Yes, yeah. and I just want to reiterate, I'm not questioning whether or not the expenses are you know, justified or not. I understand it's that. It's the process. I understand that. Um, I will um, move that we adopt these. Second. Augie? Trustee Weintraub? Yes. Badger? Yes. Lucas? Yes. All right, moving to the, the big abstract of audited vouchers totaling $831,320.58. Does anyone have any comments or questions on these vouchers? Um, I raised some questions by email uh, in more terms of having more specificity when they appear on this um, because I don't, I didn't quite understand them. I assume they're justified, but I don't, it, it doesn't really identify the projects. They were general. Uh, this had to do with AKRF's bill on page 11 and um, Jackson Lewis's bill on page 12. Unfortunately, um, I, I know that Dan Sarnoff provided a partial answer to that in email, and it may not be satisfactory, but unfortunately, we don't have the benefit of his expertise tonight. I, my question was not questioning whether we should pay this. My the point of my email was to have more specificity on these types of things so that we understand them and don't have to ask the question. Going forward. That is correct. Yes, thank you. All right, um, I will move that we pay these. I'll second. Thank you, Nora. Augie? Trustee Fletcher? Yes. Badgers? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Thank you all. Um, Goodness. Okay. Old business. We have. What, I. Shelley, I'm sorry, Dan. Yeah. With, uh, you, aren't you going to do the um, other uh, transfers? The budget transfers. Those we have to be added. No. To business. Um, those are. I'm adding to new business. Okay. Okay. Under four. Okay. 
but whatever. Um, I'm going to call on you, Dan and Nora, to remind me. I cannot remember yeah. what we decided to do with K-Crete. Are we pa are we doing this tonight or not? No, I we do not have the votes to pass it. Is that right? We, we, Dan wanted a little more information. Okay, so that that can't be done tonight. Um, we do not have three votes. Um, new business. We have one item on the agenda and then we're going to amend and add some emergency things. But first we have a resolution scheduling a public hearing on PLLF 2021, the village tree law, Nora, near and dear to your heart. Yes, it is. I know you're yes. glad to be getting this public hearing scheduled. Yes. We have a resolution scheduling it for our next meeting to start the public hearing. Who knows whether we will finish it next time or not. But to right. start the public hearing, open it um, on September 27th. Am I right? I, I see we have Beverly Sherrod from the tree committee who's in attendance. Yep. Um, and I want to thank Bob and Christy Mason, who's no longer here, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of people spent a lot of time getting to this point. I think we're it's version twenty one. So um, thanks to everybody for all their hard work, and to Jerry, who's not here now, but who wanted this for his birthday in two thousand nineteen. Okay. So, um, yeah, there was a, a lot of blood, sweat and tears and a yeah. lot of dedication and a lot of um, real passion that went into this work. So, and I will say that I think there were many, many, many people who commented. Yes. And um, I think every comment was addressed and the law was amended to reflect public sentiment. Yes. While still protecting trees. Yes. So uh, thank everyone. and. Uh, Onward. Um, now we need to amend our agenda to. No, add... I think we have to vote to schedule. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're, yeah. you're right. I thought we had done that. I will move that we schedule the public hearing for. Second. I will second that. Um, Augie, please. Trustees, what's up? Yes. Matthew? Dan? I said yes. We couldn't hear you. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Now we can move on to, um, we need to add three things to our agenda. Um, we need to add a resolution requesting expedited review and funding for the um, CRC's CDBG grant. We need to add the creation of um, an account to deal with damage from Henri. And we need to create an account to deal with damage from Ida. So can I have a motion to amend our agenda to add those items as items for B, C, and D respectively under new business? So uh, well, I, th I think we have to add them as Singly? for, yeah, I think we have to add them individually because then okay. we have to have the item. It's, we're adding six things. Okay. Let, let's, oh, I don't know, maybe we can. You're right, let's try it your way. Bob, can we do it three at once, amending and adding three in one amendment? Uh, uh, yes, you'll then have to vote on it, on it as a package. Right, as a package. And I, th I think I think we'll get it through as a as I think there's no disagreement on these. So right. um, I will move that we adopt them, but that we amend our agenda to include these three new items. The Dan motion, you're gonna second? Oh, Dan, you motioned that? Then I will second. I made that motion. Yes. Great. I will second. Uh, Augie, please call. Trustees Wenshaw? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> can, so, I, can we just say one thing? Yeah. For everybody sure. reading the second two and seeing that we're creating accounts, we're transferring money, we fully expect to get this money back from FEMA. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wanna... Thank you. Okay. Yes, we do, because it's going to be a lot of money. Um, we're, we, you know, all these, all this great cleanup and all these spectacular services um, mm -hmm. are coming at a cost. And the village lost, lost um, items in the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, we lost cars and we lost, we lost stuff. So that's all going to have to be dealt with. Um, so the resolution requesting expedited review and funding for the community resource center, they have applied for a CDBG grant. 
Um, they were destroyed in Ida, yet they have continued to serve the community remotely and outdoors since the storm. They have been vital to, um, to our residents. And Dan Natchez wisely approached our county executive on Friday and um, asked if we could expedite this. And we've been given direction to, yes, um, write a letter, which the CRC has done. And um, we now, as a board, need to show our support for expediting that, which we are doing by this resolution. The resolution, um, we did amend it in work session to be resolved. I will read it as amended. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Mamaroneck fully supports the CRC's efforts to obtain this CDBG and urges the Urban County Consortium and Westchester County to provide emergency funding for this work as soon as humanly possible. So move. Second. And I, I just want to note that there are no public comments on this um, from our Zoom. Um, Augie, could you call that? Trustees Wentrup? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Next, thank you all. Um, next, we have a resolution to create a fund um, or an accounting category for recovery from Hurricane Henri. Um, we have amended our resolution on this to read, now therefore be it resolved that in order to provide initial funding of village related expenses for its response to Hurricane Henri, the proper village officers are hereby authorized and directed to modify the 2021-22 general fund budget by creating the following general fund segregated accounts identified in the two column below and executing the following budget transfer. And we have um, $250,000 going from the general fund appropriated fund balance to um, the new category um, 8747 storm Henri flood emergency recovery in amounts totaling $250,000. We have 100,000 to overtime, 10,000 to fuel, 30,000 to supplies, 50,000 materials, contract services, 50,000, 5,000 meals and 5,000 miscellaneous. Have I missed anything from our work session discussion on this resolution? No, and I shall move the motion. And we have no public com public um, second. public folks waiting to weigh in. Um, I will second. Say that. Great, okay. thank you, Nora. Uh, um, Augie. Trustees Wentrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Thank you all. And now we have the resolution creating a general fund accounts and supplemental appropriation to fund expenses for a village response to extreme flooding caused by tropical depression Ida. Likewise, we have um, amended this resolution or edited this resolution in our work session to read as follows. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in order to provide initial funding of village re related expenses for its response to tropical depression Ida, the proper village officers are hereby authorized and directed to modify the 2021-22 general fund budget by creating the following general fund segregated accounts to identified in the two column below and executing the following budget transfer. Going from general fund appropriated fund balance in the amount of $2 million to new account 8748 storm Ida response and recovery. Um, broken down as salaries, 100,000, overtime, 250,000, equipment, 100,000, auto repair, 100,000, fuel, 100,000, supplies, 400,000, materials, 350,000, contract services, 500,000, meals, 50,000, and miscellaneous, 50,000. Have I read those changes that we discussed correctly? Yes, and I still move the motion. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Laura. And I'll notice that there are no public hands up to comment. Um, Augie, could you call this Trustees, one? Trustees, Wentro. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Thank you all. It is now time for communications to the board too. Um, I forgot this part earlier, um, but I would, I would ask that people limit their comments to five minutes if we have anyone who'd like to make general comments. Seeing none. Let's move. Um, the village manager has a report to file for the record, and he's asked me to do this in his stead. He has left for the evening. Oh, with everyone's blessing, the man is exhausted. Uh, filing for the record, a historical designation of 234 Stanley Avenue, 
filing for the record McGraw and Alaska's agreement and filing for the record energy services program agreement. We have a report now from the clerk treasurer. Augie. Yes, please be advised Abby Roberts has resigned from the resignation, resigned from the ZBA. We'd like to thank her for her time, sir. Um, I, I want to, as a personal note, thank Abby. Um, I served with her and met her on the Board of Traffic Commissioners way, way back in the day. She has been a tremendous volunteer and public servant for our village, and we will miss her greatly at the ZBA. Um, there is an opening, and we invite interested residents to submit resumes and emails um, expressing their interests to, to Sally Roberts at sroberts at vomny.org. Okay. Um, report from the village attorney. Anything, Bob? Nothing for me tonight, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, we have minutes, commissions, boards, and committees. We have minutes of the Board of Trustees work session and regular meeting of August 9th and AP meeting of August 23rd, 2021, minutes of the planning board meeting of July 14th, 2021, minutes of the HCZM meeting of January 20th, 2021, and minutes of the Board of Ethics meeting June 29th, 2021. That concludes everything on our agenda. Um, I wanna thank Dan and Nora and Bob and Sally Roberts and Augie for hanging in there till the bitter end. Um, we got done what needed to be done under trying circumstances. And so thank you all. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So thank moved. Kelly, uh, for all of your uh, leadership on this time. You're most welcome. Couldn't do it without you. Um, and so we have a motion and a second that I heard. Did you get those, Augie? Yeah, there were motions. Okay, and I think Dan seconded, correct? Second. Yes. Yeah. Um, could you call it? Sure. To be Trust super official. Question? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. We are done. Much appreciated. Good night.